Welcome back to the Hearthstone Global Games, where we had a bit of a bloodbath yesterday. A lot of teams starting to be eliminated, and unfortunately, or very fortunately, depending on how much you like the drama, that's going to continue today. Yeah, we've got a lot of, uh, like you said, teams eliminated yesterday. I believe Slovakia amongst them, Hungary as well. Yeah. Always sad to see a lot of teams leaving who maybe were looking to put their name in the spotlight a little bit more through the Hearthstone Global Games, as we've seen from so many teams last year. Uh, but also on the other side, we've got uh, some teams who will be looking to qualify through to the top 16 yep. today, which is exciting for an entirely different set of reasons. Let's take a look at the standings and get an idea of which teams are which. There you go, 4 and 0. Oh, the only team so far to have pretty much guaranteed their place in the top 16 is Ukraine. Today, you will see all of the 3 and 0 oh teams competing against one another. So two of those teams will be joining Ukraine at 4 and 0. Oh. Uh, and then we have some other teams with a slightly worse score playing as well. That's right. As uh, we can, I would imagine, take a look over at the next page, we will be seeing today uh, the USA take on Kazakhstan, I believe, down at one and two. The loser of that match will be eliminated from the Hearthstone Global Games. Yeah, in the off-stream matches, we actually have some elimination matches as well. We have Greece versus Indonesia and France versus Portugal. France, Greece, these big titans of the Hearthstone scene potentially being eliminated today. Yeah, and it's sad all for different reasons. Like you said, Greece is a team that I feel like since last year has uh, kind of put its name on the map a lot more with Fino being right up at the top there mm -hmm. as the standout player in terms of points that he's earned. Um, but Indonesia on the other side of that, just uh, in terms of how passionate they feel about it, their victories always look so exuberant when they've actually won a series. Uh, so I never like to see teams go, but you, we got to kick them out sometime. But which games are being played today on stream? Well, we're going to kick off with China versus Taiwan. These are two of the 3-0 and o teams looking to qualify. Then we have Romania versus Switzerland. Kazakhstan versus the United States, which is an elimination match. Then Chile versus Norway. And finally, Brazil versus Spain for another qualification match. Derek, what's the highlight for today, do you think? I think for me, it would have to be... Oh, I can't even decide. I was going to say the first one because Taiwan is my pick yeah. to win the whole thing. They are still 3-0, and oh, so looking to be in a very good spot to potentially qualify through today. But then by the same merit, there's uh, another qualification match, Brazil-Spain. Uh, Brazil is a team that I've been following very closely this year, or the players from there at least, uh, with Reis doing a fantastic job. Perna almost getting there as well uh, in Copa America this weekend. But like I said, I think it's got to be the Taiwan-China match for me. It is your pick after all. Here are, here are the teams I listed earlier playing off stream. There you go. United Kingdom, one of our favorites, one of Gaskin's picks playing off stream there. But Greece and Indonesia and France and Portugal are two games that I'm definitely going to want to catch up on later when they're uploaded to YouTube. Yes, I would agree with you there. There have been some uh, pretty cool moments on the uh, YouTube Hearthstone Esports YouTube channel, if you haven't checked that out, where almost every week players reach out to us and say, although our match was off stream, you're really going to want to see this <laughs> game because they've done something especially cool. And, you know, most of the time it's like uh, they got a defile or something. But sometimes there are some very cool moments on there. But game number one, China versus Taiwan. Let's take a look at the players. Lee, Trunks, Yulov and Omega Zero representing China versus World Champion Tom62229, AHQ Shaxi, AHQ Roger, and Riel. Uh, now, Derek, you gave me some interesting uh, championship points facts earlier about Team Taiwan. Well, yeah, just how, uh, contrary to one, how one might expect on the Asia Pacific, with uh, being, there being such well-known players there like Surrender, Tyler, who just moved over to Vietnam and is therefore now competing in the Asia Pacific region, uh, they are not number one in points. Ak Shaxi and Dak Rivius are kind of battling it out at number oh. one uh, for one and two. And I believe Tyler comes in at third, or at least it was uh, last month. I'm not sure. Wow. Oh. Most up to date. But yes, on this team for Taiwan, Ak Shaxi being in number one points, as well as, like you said, the previous world champion in Tom 60229. I'm still feeling very good about my pick here. I can definitely see why you picked them. That's, that's one solid lineup. And again, one of the only teams currently 3 and 0. Oh. Maybe you'll be joining Gaskin with a team going 4 and 0 oh very soon. Let's take a look at the picks and bands and get this series underway. Starting off with the Double Druid ban, no surprise there, but the first picks are going to be Shaman Mage, Shaman and Hunter. Okay, no Rogue and not even Hunter on both sides. That's different. Yeah, so looking at the Mage is a very interesting standout one for me. It's the Aggro Mage that is being picked right off the bat what? there for China. 
Um, which, after you've banned Druid, you know, it makes sense to be bringing an Aggro Mage. It's one of the worst matchups for that deck due to the crazy amount of armor gain. But even then, I do find that it struggles against some of the more aggressive decks uh, that players are bringing because it usually falls behind on board. And we do see from Taiwan, some of those aggressive decks are represented. Odd Paladin, Odd Rogue. Uh, they do have the Control Mage, which is a pretty good matchup, though, for the Temper Mage. So it's an interesting pick that we don't see all too much, as Mage is considered pretty low down on the tier list at the moment. We've got a real mix here when it comes to sort of cards from the Boomsday Project, as well as some of the decks we saw from China. Unfortunately, one of the decks that got banned actually in included only nine old cards and wow. 21 new cards in total. Um, but it was the Paladin and it did get banned away. So we might be seeing that in a future week. Whereas a lot of Taiwan's deck lists are actually just completely free of any new cards. They've just, just included old lists. Yeah, just tried and tested. Uh, but like Tyler was saying in the interview we had with him yesterday, I still feel like, given that this is the first week back of HGG since the Boomsday Project, players are kind of taking it safe, yeah. especially the ones at the uh, top uh, uh, levels in Swiss, like 3-0 with China and Taiwan here. They don't want to be too risky. Maybe they go for a strategy and it gets countered by the already tried and tested decks. So while I am alongside you, I would like to see a couple more of the Boomsday cards in this uh, series. I think it will be starting to develop as the meta progresses. And here for Taiwan, it probably is just the best strategy. Should we take a look at how these games are falling into place? Oh, that first game seems familiar. It does indeed. Uh, but I'm sure everyone will be delighted to hear that is not another odd warrior. I know <laughs> you and I are delighted to not have to be going through another one of them anytime soon. Uh, it should actually be quite an interesting matchup, as it is the Dead Man's Hand Control Warrior uh, for China, I believe. And then on Taiwan's side, it is the slightly more old school, or was popular last meta, Quest Taunt Warrior, where they should be able to put themselves right. in a pretty good spot due to that constant Ragnaros hero power closing things out. Yeah, and speaking of Taiwan not really playing any new cards, they're running a single copy of Weapons Project, and otherwise... It is just Quest Warrior from the previous expansion. Yeah, and Weapons Project has clearly been shown to be one of the stronger project cards. Uh, after the initial hype was all Biology Project, that's kind of all anyone was talking about because on its surface, it seems insane. You can get a turn three ultimate infestation with that bad boy, which is, uh, it turns out, really good for a Twitter post and not actually all that much else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into game number one. I've got to say, Demonic Project seems to be the one that's had the most play, though, yeah. recently, anyways. I would agree with you there. It's just uh, any kind of disruption with your opponent's hand is such a rare effect in Hearthstone, but so valuable that you would even play what is quite objectively a pretty terrible card, actually, in Demonic Project. So, it's going to be the Dead Man's Hand Control Warrior versus quest warrior how how do you expect this one to go down Derek? does the does the quest warrior just get the win condition of the hero power and win well that'll definitely be their their game plan it's pretty easy here for taiwan you just turbo through the quest you're probably pretty fine to draw cards because you're never winning in fatigue anyway due to the fact that trunks does have the dead man's hand adding up to nine additional cards back into his deck uh, so again for tom60229 here the world champion as i'm sure everyone knows he will just be getting that Sulfurus online as quick as possible. Uh, for Trunks, however, on the other side, it gets a little bit more complicated as to what his win condition is, because this uh, Dead Man's Hand Control Warrior can play in a lot of different ways. Uh, you will usually just be relying on removing a lot of minions, waiting for them to have, you know, one blip, uh, just slowing down in their progression onto the board. And then you slam some of the bigger cards in the deck. I'm talking about uh, cards like the Lich King, Gromash Hellscream, and even Geo Sculptor Yip. Oh, okay. Uh, which is a very cool inclusion. I always like to see that card floating about. However, when they have a Ragnaros Hero Power hitting you for eight every single turn, they never really do let up. There's never a lull in their plan. Curiously, I believe Trunks held on to Weapons Project in his, uh, in his opening hand there. I wonder what the, uh, what the intention for that is. Well, it's a way to clear off early minions so that Taiwan cannot run away with the board early on is probably what China uh, are thinking there with that decision. Uh, I do agree that it's probably not one of the cards you are most heavily looking for in this matchup. Yeah. But in terms of cards you are actually looking for in this matchup, there's not that much. Because in the early game, 
your minions are not threatening in the slightest. They are not like board control minions. They're cards that do like tertiary tech things. They draw you cards with Acolyte. They silence with Iron Beak Owl. Um, and they draw, get you armor with Dry Whisker. They don't put on any pressure in the early game. And so there wasn't really anything you could look for to try and smoke out this game nice and quickly. It's really just the bigger cards later on for which Trunks is going to have to find some removal leading up to them and then hope that a ju uh, just a big Geosculptor or a big Lich King mm -hmm. can close things out for him. The project cards are also interesting because of the, uh, the, the effect happening on both sides. And I can't help but wonder if maybe Trunks is going to want to try and interrupt a Blood Razor by playing Weapons Project at some point, replace the Blood Razor with the weapon. I'm not sure really how high impact that is, though. Yeah, you like you what you deny a draw off of um, an Acolyte of Pain is kind of the best that you're looking yeah. at there. Now that things like Sleep with the Fishes have gone, the Whirlwind effect uh, is mostly just for damaging minions for execute. And, you know, I guess China would maybe be thinking they want to make sure no execute can go down on the Lich King or Geosculptor once again because there wouldn't be any whirlwind effects to activate the execute. But I think it's probably a little bit more simple than that for Trunks. He just wants something that can win board control for him early on. Okay. As for Trunks here, just kind of trying to curve out the best he can, take the value trades and draw cards whilst also getting a little bit of armor off the Dry Whisker. But again, as good as it is looking here uh, for China right now, uh, Taiwan has just not even got started yet. Tom will start throwing down all these Taunt minions. Does Tom have to execute this Acolyte of Pain? Because otherwise, it's definitely drawing two cards. That, that is an issue. He's got no other way of dealing with it. Yeah, it's definitely a consideration, right? Um, but then you need to start thinking, I only have two executes in my deck, and he obviously has the shield slams as well, I believe. Oh, one shield slam in the deck, sorry. Uh, so the amount of removal is fairly low, and you do need to be worried about that, uh, those threats from your opponent, because although it's unlikely to happen, they could dead man's hand their big threats back into the deck and draw them again at a later point, uh, which would mean you, uh, you, know, you really, really want the removal less than Geosculptor or a Lich King does stick for even a turn. So I think here, I do like for Taiwan kind of just ignoring what China's trying to do here. Yes, they get to draw one extra card, but getting out these minions on curve yeah. every single turn should lead to a more consistent win condition. Like a lot of the other quest decks, Quest Warrior has just become this race to get to the finish. And as the expansions have been coming out over the last year, uh, they've been getting faster and faster, thanks to cards like the uh, the three mana, two, four Echo, etc. Um, Tom is looking like he's making a good pace here. Meanwhile, China, though, don't have much going on at all uh, yet. Yeah, they don't uh, right now. But I was going to say, like, for China, this isn't looking that bad at the moment, actually. They've got a, uh, at least right now, like, considering how grim this matchup, I would imagine, is for them in the long term. Um, they do have a good amount uh, of cards in hand, which means plenty of removal uh, for if Tom does go too wide on the board. Even just a Harrison Jones as a 5-4, if it's not met with removal, could deal a bit of damage to the face. The Lich King could maybe follow up. Uh, you know, it's stuff like that that kind of needs to happen to turn this around for Trunks. The Acolyte of Pain, however, for Taiwan is really just exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. This hand was kind of looking at uh, being in danger of running out of taunts. And then if they started drawing all their cards like Brawl, Execute, Shield, Slam, stuff like that that doesn't actually complete the quest, that could get a little bit scary for them. But with the Acolyte of Pain, I would have to imagine this is going to be a very nice number of cards drawn for them. Even if it's just the one, in the worst case scenario, so what? It's about as good as it gets for Tom now, the Acolyte of Pain. They don't even run a Battle Rage. Imagine that in this position. That'd be phenomenal. Um, but do you think that the Acolyte of Pain actually comes down this turn? Or is he going to play in, in a future turn after a Blood Razor, maybe? But he's obviously not going to play it this turn now. He's played the Sentient Shieldmaster. Yeah, I mean, he did, it's kind of the, the classic thing in Hearthstone, isn't it? Of the thing you, uh, One of the first rules you learn is usually you play your cards then you draw your cards. In, in most decks, that's what you want to do because you want to keep the tempo while you can, work towards your win condition, and then restock your hand afterwards uh, to actually follow up uh, and make sure that you can continue the pressure. It obviously gets a little bit more complicated in combo decks or decks like, or super control decks where you don't really play anything that isn't removal. 
Um, but I like here for Taiwan again, making sure they can get two draws off of it with Acolyte into Blood Razor on the same turn. Pretty good draw result there for China. They uh, played that pretty much the moment it got drawn. Again, not much going on at the moment, but very soon, once the mana is there, with dead with cards like the Lich King, Dead Man's Hand, to, to throw the Lich King back into the deck later. Mm -hmm. If he can get that Geo Sculptor that you mentioned earlier, the summon a random minion um, with mana cost equal to how much armor you have, that can really just go off with infinite value if it can't be dealt with. What now? So Tom kind of needs to think for a second about using this cornered sentry because it could be useful if somehow China managed to, to stick a couple of minions on board to go for a cornered sentry brawl. But even having said that, I think I like this more. It still just carries on with the plan of playing a taunt every single turn. You gain your armor in the meanwhile, and you've also just seen a brawl. And getting this chip damage through to their armor total is it's not nothing. Maybe that means you can get the uh, kill one turn earlier. As unlikely as that is to make a huge difference, you may as well just get those minions on board. What now? A little bit more of a complicated turn here for Trunks, however, with obviously triple Warpath available after the trading in of all the Raptors could clear the board. You don't really want to be using Warpath, though, without going for the Acolyte of Pain on the same turn. Mm. Uh, but then if you do go for... What, you trade one of your Raptors into the Tar Creeper, the rest into the Cornered Sentry, and then go Acolyte, double Warpath? You're then just overdrawing, aren't you? So, um, uh, doesn't work out perfectly here for Trunks. And even the ability to go for uh, Weapons Project into Harrison, you can't do that this turn because you have too many cards. And all of the lines I was talking about involved drawing cards and therefore overdrawing cards. So here, I like the use from China of using the removal somewhat inefficiently, I would argue, or fairly inefficiently, actually, on very underwhelming targets just to clear cards out of hand. Just an execute and a shield slam on a bunch of small taunts doesn't seem great. But as you said, with a hand that full and, and China only wanting to draw more cards, I guess it was their only option. Now Tom can play Acolyte and Blood Razor this yep, turn yep, if yep. he wants to. There's really nothing else going on with, with Taiwan's Not hand, no. so I guess there's no other option. Yep. I like the consideration for something else. Maybe you play Dry Whisker on this turn because they're not going to play any other minions or something silly, but yeah. You just play the Acolyte here. Like you said, there's nothing really else going on. And even if it gets Harrison here, great. Or even if it gets Weapons Project, fine. You just take the Death Rattle. You don't care about the 2 1 weapon at all. It's yeah. just the Death Rattle that you want. Wow, Gromash drawn from China there. And actually. <laughs> I mean, it's playable this turn, but I don't think it's any good this turn. It would just be dealing with the Acolyte and denying one card draw, which I don't think is worth such a big body. Yeah, Trunks, I think, now probably does need to start thinking about Dead Man's Hand at some point soon, because outside of these big threats, I'm actually struggling to think what he wants in his hand. Um, he, armor gain is not bad, but it's kind of just delaying the inevitable. He could go Owl Harrison to deny more card draw from what Taiwan. And, and honestly, with a hand as small as Tom has now, denying that card draw does seem quite valuable. It, it does seem fairly valuable, but again, saving the weapons project for Harrison later on to draw through his oh, big threats yeah. after he did a dead man's hand is a very valuable swing as well. As Bulgaria just won their first game against the Russian Federation. Currently they are... Um, Two and one in the Swiss, as Trunks does make that play, doesn't go for the value with Harrison Weapons Project later. But again, it does leave Tom's hand stranded. They have, the uh, Taiwan have two shield blocks. Okay, cool. He's got to hope that he gets something good from them. Yeah, th there's not that many misses left in the deck yeah, though, to be honest. There's Phantom Militia next turn is more than enough to complete the quest. You could even just go for two of them and then uh, equip the uh, Sulfurus on the same turn to start swinging away perfectly on turn 10. This is a nice, quick turbo activation for Taiwan. So now, really, it's China that have to react quickly to the fact that this quest is going to be complete. Trunks needs to take the aggressive route yep. now. Time to start dropping Lich Kings and Gromashes, but the problem is, as you said, he's not played Dead Man's Hand yet. Does that matter? Maybe he just has to forget about that card entirely and just go with his and as aggressive plan as possible. Yeah, you've got to be really careful with Dead Man's Hand here because it 
you're not going to draw your whole deck. Um, if you dead man's hand, you're unlikely to draw through your whole deck before the game is over, mm -hmm. which means on average, are you actually giving yourself more threats before the game's over? Because like you said, you do shuffle two nice big threats into the deck in Lich King and Gromash. You also shuffle a whole lot of rubbish in there. Yeah. Like, you don't want these other cards to be drawn later on if you're just trying to go aggressive, which clearly here, that is what Trunks is trying to do. Omega assemblies just aren't looking aggressive enough at the moment anyways. Maybe after Dr. Boom gets played or something, they become a little bit better. Yeah. But Omega Assembly is a value card, and value is not what China need to win this game. Could get a, a Bulldozer, something like that. Sure. A Mechathune. Not even for the, the Mechathune Death Rattle, just because it's a 10-10 and it survives an attack from the Sulfurous Hero Power. All right, quest complete. And now... Tom has to decide how he wants to spend the rest of his mana. Is he shield slamming this Lich King? Yep, he is shield slamming this Lich King. <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, maybe they can get something off of that that messes you up. If they get two Dead Man's Hands or two Frost Morns or, you know, something silly like that, uh, then maybe it could start to go a little bit awry. There's Yip. Yip, yep. Is Yip playable this turn, though? It's playable with Dead Man's Hand, but maybe... Just go Grom this time. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, I was then thinking. It dies to the hero power, doesn't it? Which oh, it would no. do 50% of the time. And even then, they probably have an execute or something like that. Whereas if Yip's played, then trying to get a six drop and maybe Yip survives. Yeah, so if you're playing Yip, you probably just go hero power. Like, I think you just give up on Dead Man's Hand at this mm -hmm. point. It's not really doing anything. And getting an eight drop instead what? of a six drop, no. I think, is more valuable. The problem is, other than the Gromash and the Yip, that that's it. Trunks is sort of out of big threats now. Yeah. Doctor Boom uh, so maybe he doesn't isn't a threat. Hand. So yeah, may maybe he does. Nope, he has decided against it. So he just needs to take the most aggressive routes possible here, like which is this an armor up? Yeah, exactly. Maybe this sticks. Like if Taiwan's hand is complete rubbish, but even by that metric, Taiwan didn't play a taunt for a couple of turns. They just drew for a couple of turns, which means their hand is probably removal because this deck is just taunts and removal with a little bit of draw in there as well. Okay, quick, let's look. What four drops are in this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Beak Owl, Acolyte of Pain, Dry Whisker Armorers. I mean, I think he's got all of them, right? It's just like a, a Dry Whiskerer yeah. he's got left. Yeah, that is one of the worst eight drops I think you could see. <laughs> I was thinking we'd get a Tyrion or something. I know. Something well, that something actually like has that. an impact. Yeah, that would do it. Well, it wouldn't do it. It would probably still lead to a loss, but it would be better than a blooming 3 5 here that summons a 2 2. <laughs> Not only that, but Taiwan can actually use the minion and the weapon to deal with it alone. Yeah, they they will be fully expecting two minions to pop out, I think. Uh, which means they probably want to take the attack before. Will they be expecting two minions to pop out? There's an Acolyte of Pain in hand. What, what have That's they seen? It, right? They've... There's another Dry Whisker thing. Sure, but then the chances of one of the cards being in hand should have been pretty high. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I think the chance that it's there, though, like... You're, you're fully expecting one, which means you're getting the same odds anyway, right. right? Well, they have to now execute this, right? It's pretty simple. Yep, I would agree with you there. You are oh. a little bit afraid of, uh, afraid of a, a Gromma. No way. They're leaving Yip alive. Oh, they're just eroding the health total and saying, that'll do, pig. They got the Brawl, uh, which is a strong follow-up. And I, I guess either way, like, how does it make a difference? If you execute this, then that's basically their last threat gone outside of Gromash. If you Brawl all of this away, it's also their last threat gone yeah, outside true. of Gromash. And Gromash doesn't win the game. You are at 53 health for Tom. The only ways Trunks has of gaining a lot of armor this turn are Shield Blocks or Dr. Boom. And either of those plays would be using up a lot of mana. So I guess that's not a big concern for Taiwan. Yeah. However, for Taiwan, I guess the thinking of saving this here is at the moment, Yip is not actually that good for China. Um, so they are thinking we'll save the brawl for maybe a big board of mechs off of Omega Assembly. That seemed like a very low value Dead Man's Hand to me. I mean, sorry, no, low value is the wrong word. He got two copies of Omega Assembly, but low impact Dead Man's Hand. I think it was kind of as good as it's going to get from here on in, right? What, what's it, uh, what else is he looking to shuffle? Uh, you don't want to shuffle Death Knights because you've already played it. You've got two Omega Assemblies and a Gromash, like you said, and a Giggling Inventor. Those are the best cards left. Yeah, okay. Obviously, I was very wrong about the armor. I totally forgot the weapons project. Yeah. In 
just exciting. You're going to have to let me off for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, survives the brawl. Yeah. You obviously always have that execute from here on in now. Sure, they just have to now. <laughs> There's no question about yeah. this anymore. Uh, what? Okay. what? Again, it, it's just kind of the biggest threat. They're, they're thinking, like, how can okay. they gain the armor again now? I do like the hesitation here from Taiwan. I don't think it's as obvious as it first appears, because if Grom does stick for two hits to face, okay. maybe, or again, if they get a bulldozer or a mechathune, it's like, I'm stuff, glad stuff can go wrong. I'm glad you liked the hesitation, Derek. I was about to burst a blood vessel. <laughs> well, this is like the skill of playing Taunt Warrior, though, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. The, the false assumption with this deck is that when you complete the quest, you just win. Uh, it's not like old school quest rogue where, you know, you completed it and then you healed up for a million and you deal, dealt a million damage that turn. You are very susceptible to having minions put in the way. Just a giggling inventor can be such a nuisance for this deck. If it can soak up four attacks just from minions, it can soak up five hero powers, potentially just one giggling inventor, if you don't save the removal to deal with it. Uh, obviously, Execute doesn't deal with a Giggly Inventor, but I'm just trying to orchestrate the point that you do need to be very careful with your removal, lest your hero powers just not do what they're supposed to. Alright, time to just start dealing that damage, and as you said, and this will have been the one reason not to play the Execute, that Gromash might just slip. There isn't actually a clear -cut way of removing this right now, apart from the hero power, obviously. Um, but that's only a 50-50. So another weird turn here for Taiwan, because obviously you could attack first to take less damage and say, hey, we'll hit the 50-50, we're brilliant, I'm the world champion. Um, or you could go for it first, hoping to hit it afterwards, because then obviously if you miss, you don't have to attack at all. You they, save yourself most damage. They could just Warpath it afterwards as well. That would have been another option. Like Acolyte into Warpath uh, wasn't looking too bad if the hero power that's hit true. the Gromash, which, as it didn't, I don't think Tom is going to interact with that Gromash in any way whatsoever. I actually still think, though, no. it would have been... If, if it had been hit there, you would probably still tank the hit with your face because Warpath, like I said, is so important to guarantee that it goes face later on. Like, if Taiwan just... Uh, sorry, if Tom just starts playing these Warpaths willy-nilly here... Oh, Giggling Inventor. Sure. Yeah, Giggling sure. Inventor can get in the way. Just, just any minions. Even if it hits an Acolyte of Pain for a turn, or an Owl, or a Dry Whisker, or anything, it's just a little bit too much. Trying to have three copies of a Mega Assembly in their hand. That is three mana, gain nine mechs. Oh. Their hand is already full, Derek. Yeah. When are they ever playing these cards? Well... They're going to start by doing this. They, it's the same as when uh, earlier on, right, when they wanted to start drawing with Harrison's. They just played Execute, played Shield Slam to get it out of the hand. Obliterate, just dumping it here. They don't really yeah, care funny. about killing off the Acolyte all too much, oh, even though it is valuable. Well, renting the card draw does seem pretty good, though. Yeah. Oh, the 10 mana 10 10. Awesome. Those ain't bad. Weaponized Pinata as well. That's true. Can. It can do bits, that's all I'm saying. That can be pretty filthy. This deck wants value, and having a random legendary minion in hand can be valuable. It doesn't look like Trunks is, is dying anytime soon to Tom's hero power, but as you said, those warpaths are really going to have a chance to shine here against this giggling inventor. But what if of weaponized Pinata you get Tyrantus and you just slam that bad boy on the <laughs> board? They can't interact with it directly, they just have to hope hero powers hit it would mean China using up all 10 mana to play it, though. It would, but, you know, they, they need... What else are they doing with their mana in this Spat instance? Obviously, Dynamatic can be pretty strong as well. Given that I don't believe Taiwan have many mechs in their deck. They don't have any new minions whatsoever. That's not so forlorn, Daniel. I'm just saying, no yeah. new minions probably means no mechs, which probably means pretty weak deck to Dynamatic, as it goes wow. to face again. Oh my lord. Although, that might not be so bad now. Yeah. Trunks only has no. 11 health. <laughs> it's good. How are they going to outrace you? The A of 10, you have 8. The difference is negligible, I would say. Even if you just get, what, one more to face is lethal, because you can then equip Scourge Lord Garrosh afterwards. Uh, they probably hero power, so it doesn't actually work out exactly this turn. But, basically, Taiwan is still in a pretty good spot. And again, saving the warpath to deal with the giggling inventor, just yeah, the perfect use for it in this matchup. 
Is it Mechathune time? Slam the tent. That's what <laughs> I say. You need to get racing them, right? Sooner rather than later. They know that if it goes face, they will have calculated the damage from Scourge Lord Garrosh as well. Problem is, one more hero power to the face now is then dump Scourge Lord Garrosh, weapon to the face, lethal. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, but but that means that you can't really play Mechathune because China needs to armor up this turn. <laughs> that's also what I just said. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> Me neither. Had a funny had a funny minute there, Derek. Sorry about that. No worries, mate. Uh, going with the weaponized pinata instead. Uh, it makes a good amount of sense. You know, you get the hero power in, like we said, and you can get that tasty legendary inside. Two and zero for Bulgaria versus the Russian Federation. Wow. We're still on game one here. <laughs> Surprised to see Russian Federation taking such an early 2-0 uh, loss in that series. They are a team that is not to be sniffed at. I'm surprised, actually, to see the Russian Federation take a 2-0 loss already. They're not a bad team. That was quite funny. Well done. What was? Ha 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 ha. Whoa, hear the warpath coming down for Tom, realizing he can, what, draw them two cards, and after that it's just Mill, which is, you know... Oh, wait, he can deny the legendary by going for this. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. That's so sick. Is it that impactful, though? It's a cool play, though, right? You clear the board. This either clears it off or goes face. Both are fantastic results. Brilliant. You take that. Yeah. And there's no random variance. Like, they can't get something to blow yep. this out. Maybe they get Deathwing or Tyrantus or, uh, I don't know, Tyrion or some massive legendary that could pull this back. This just means there is no ability for them to make that big swing. I love this play from Taiwan. Yeah, that's true. Well, it certainly worked out. However, Trunks doesn't have... Bad plays this turn himself. Dynamatic just straight up clears the 2-5. Shield block can be played as well as armoring up some more, buying Trunks some more time. And if Trunks can get some minions on the board now to protect his face, to maybe prevent this hero power from going face a few more times, maybe China can last this one out a little bit longer. Yeah, that is his chance. This is always what you do as control decks against the odd warrior, or the control warrior, sorry. You just stick stuff in the way, hope it hits it, and then... You can see yourself leading to a victory. It was, uh, who was it in HGG that made the Ragnaros hero power hit the totem every single time? Was it was that race, race on yeah. Brazil, yeah. And it, I mean, obviously he didn't actually dictate it. It was just kind of a little joke they were having. But if you just put stuff in the way, it can go wrong. It is a random hero power after all. You cannot rely on it. That one took me by surprise for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Not very often you draw obliterates from your deck, yeah. but, uh, you know, with Dead Man's Hand, it can happen. Um, so this it is a little bit more of a complicated turn for China. I guess they could, again, just drop the 10 mana 10 10. Potentially that eats up a hero power and also one of these two fours. China would like to go wide now, but they don't have any minions in the hand, nor do they have the space to play Omega Assembly to get the minions to play the minions. Yes, so what do they do? Warpaths? Uh, that doesn't even clear much space out of hand. So they, yeah, they're going with this. They play the cheapest cards possible and then play the first Omega Assembly. That's what they do. All right, let's have a look. Another Dynamatic! Yeah, that's a, a little bit less like it. Spark Engine is... Uh, well, it, is it's it stuff you can, throw in, you can throw in the way, actually, there's, right? There's no, like, one damage AoE or anything for Taiwan now. He has nothing except deal 8 damage to a random minion. This 2-1, one, that 1-1, one, one, they're actually looking very strong to me. It's not bad, is it? Because, uh, <laughs> again, the unspoken thing is you cannot equip Scourge Lord Garrosh unless it delivers lethal because you give yeah. up your good hero power. Um, yeah, it's not bad, eh? May, I mean, okay, Tom can slam one of these, I guess, but... They are doing a great job of preventing this hero power from going face. Well, let's see. No, hey, never mind. There we go. And this is the thing. I was <laughs> talking never about it being mind. unreliable and random, which, you know, it still is. But sometimes it just goes face. And you only need a couple more of them for Taiwan to close the game out. So the 2-1 is a mech, and the 1-1 is an elemental. So yeah, the 1-1 one -one would have to trade in, then Dynamatic would do its thing to clear up the entire board. Um, he's trying to not going to go with that. I mean, the only the only that. alternative is just playing Mechagoon, which is okay. bad, because then you have a 50-50 to die. Yeah. Like you said, sticking anything you possibly can <laughs> in the way. 
Um, you, oh, it's such a weird one because you kind of have to hero power here instead of playing the meat wagon. But the difference between 10 and 12 health is basically nothing. It's really the fact that he's saying, I think eventually we'll be able to get up to gaining, what, six more health so that we can survive two hits. Or oh, sorry, eight more health to survive two hits. I think having the meat wagon on the board is better anyway, percentages wise, just lowering that chance of it hitting the face to begin with. The meat wagon will still be there next turn, or it won't, and the other minions will still be there next turn. So I think as bad as not hero powering feels here, I think this is still slightly better. Yeah, I agree. Because again, you're probably not going to gain eight more health before the end of the game. So I guess the two one gets slammed, and then that hero power is coming down. One in three. F oh no! He yeah, I think you just hero power, right? He can't play the slam and the garage on the hero power. So yeah, you're right. Just hero power and take the one in four for lethal here. Because even if you just you're just hitting stuff, that's fine. Like they're not going to be able to play many more minions than this, right? You know that Meat Wagon doesn't summon anything because there's no zero cost minions in the deck or zero uh, attack minions in the deck. Sorry. What now? But again, uh, the consideration is nice because you know if you can hit two in a row, then it makes it more juicy. But uh, you do just take it slow here, right? Even when you hit that, you can um, give it a little lull. Because uh, they did get the, the worst target there, I suppose. Yeah, now Slam doesn't clear up anything. He's going to draw a card, but <laughs> Tom is actually running out of cards in his deck. I Ooh, mean, I, is massive. I talked about how bad these Omega Assemblies were earlier, but look how good they've been now. Though, as you said, Brawl so good. is going to be another 50-50 for lethal, isn't it, next turn? Not for lethal. 10 health. Um... Oh, sure. But uh, close. But in my head, good as, for some reason, in as. my head, Garrosh is free. Like, you just play an extra four damage any turn you want. Clearly, that's not the case. So you're right. It's still not going to be lethal, but it's going to be one step closer. And China knows that there's still a Brawl left in Taiwan's deck. So the question is, what how no. much do they play around it? Yeah, and that was clearly the hesitation because I think they basically reached for Giggling Inventor as soon as they grabbed it, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as they drew it, sorry, and then someone just went, whoa, 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 <laughs> hold up there, buddy. Turning a rove is not that bad. Yeah, it's really not bad, hey. Just something to stick in play. I mean, Mecha Roo, it's two minions. You potentially, that's one great. mana gains 16 health in the best that's, possible scenario. Well, that's protection against Brawl, isn't it? Mecha Roo. Yeah, sure. As for Taiwan, I would have to imagine this is brawl worthy. Ooh, but Blood Razor does change things up here. You can go Blood Razor attack in. There would then only be two minions in that play. Looks that looks pretty good to me, actually. They've just gained a whole bunch of mechs. That does look very good. Would be one mana too expensive to play brawl and Blood Razor and yeah, Hero yeah. Power, which could potentially be lethal. But uh, I am a little surprised we didn't see the, the Mecha Root come down last turn again. It's, it's such good protection against the brawl. But I guess, again, with, with Blood Razor in hand, the Mecha is very weak to that. Yeah. Oh, it's complicated. So if you did want to go for Blood Razor, attack in, and then execute, you could still take a 50-50 like it would be with Brawl. I guess Taiwan are thinking, though, next turn they could actually get the Blood Razor hit to face, which would be uh, the 8 and 2 me making 10. Yep. They end up going with the Brawl. I have to be honest, I'm not convinced that this is the best way to go. You can end up with a Divine Shielded Annoyatron with the way this shakes out, and they have. And if they hit this now, this is pretty bad, but they do manage to nail the hit to face instead. Well, now suddenly Garrosh is a terrifying prospect for China, as that will just be four damage immediately. The Annoyatron being in the, in the way is very helpful, though. As now Blood Razor actually gets... <laughs> Quite a lot worse with the Turnium Rover in there as well. Yeah, if Rover comes down here, that Blood Rays is awful. Yeah, I, I mean, they gain they gain two health. Like Unless they get up uh, above eight, it really won't make much difference at all. But it starts to close out the outs for Blood Razor hit to face for lethal. Or oh, Garrosh, Garrosh hit to face, face exactly. Well, yeah. well, that's that's the thing. At, at two health and one armor up would be four, and then yeah. Garrosh could potentially do it. But with the Rover boosting Trunk's health by at least three, if not more... But then as Blood Razor gets better, it's meeting a Mecharu and a 
spark thing. I can't even remember. A spark drill? That card's so bad, I can't even remember what it's called. And if you can't remember what it's called, it must be bad. <laughs> I think it's called spark drill. Weapons project and another six armor as well. Yeah, just a burst of health. Try and keep Trunks in the game. Really showing how strong that card is, actually. Yeah. Even valuing, you know, getting this, uh, getting the Blood Razor Whirlwind effect, getting that armor over the Anoitron's Divine Shield. So one hero power is no longer good enough to win the game. There's no lethal out this turn. This hits the Mecharoo all the over. Really, that's a disaster. It hits the Mecharoo. That's another turn that China are hanging in there. They are. And now the Execute kind of feels tempting to go down on the Eternium Rover oh. as well. Mm. They've got, you know that they have two mechs left in hand if you've been keeping track, which with four members on your team, someone will be assigned to keeping track of how many mechs they have left <laughs> in hand. I think there's another Omega Assembly in the deck as well, isn't there? Uh, yes, there's <laughs> four, four shuffled, so two shuffled, so four altogether. Tar Creeper is pretty low impact, unfortunately for Taiwan. It's good for defending themselves, but that's not really what Taiwan is trying to achieve here. Another weapons wow. project drawn, that's six more armor. They're getting to the point where it is going to need to be two hero powers through to face to close things out. Um, it, it still very likely happens, to be honest. Like we're, you know, we're trying to sugarcoat this here for Trunks on Team China, but it does still feel like delaying the inevitable. I guess it depends how good the third Omega Assembly is. These 1-1s one -ones are looking a lot worse now there's a Blood Razor in the hand. Yeah, and China will be have, uh, bearing that in mind. They uh, will, I guess, just be taking the one out of three. Like, they want to have two, three minions on board is the sweet spot, I think, where it's still unlikely to hit their face. Um, but they're not just completely blown out by removal. Because if they go double Sparks here and they are met with Blood Razor, the only minion they have in hand is literally just Mechathune, which, I don't know, gets a couple hero powers or executed or whatever. Like, it's not a good minion to have. Okay, gonna put this crazy thought out there for a second. Mechathune never wins this game, does it? No. Yeah, it will not happen. Okay. I, I, I like the... I just needed to get that out of my system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the, the idea, but... Yeah, like even in the late game, like Taiwan will not play. There won't. There probably won't be more than one minion on the board, so Brawl will actually just be unplayable. Yeah. Uh, and you won't have time to get rid of all your cards. Yeah. But still, as a ten mana ten ten, it might might find a chance to be played. As Blood Razor clears up everything, that's eight damage going directly to the dome now. As the last Blood Razor has been used. Although Tom finding some more value of his own. This is, um, oh, Ciliax. That was the quickest pick I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I didn't even get to see what the other options were. Dr. Boom, the mad genius himself. Yeah, you can get yourself three microbots, which all of a sudden gets a lot better. Uh, you can gain seven armor, which is fantastic. Discovering a mech isn't bad. The Blood Razor can't be destroyed next turn either. So, yeah, the Death Rattle won't be going off. And you kind of... You kind of have to go for it, right? Like, you're not winning this game as it currently stands. Your only other play is Mechathune, which we can see would lose on the spot. Yep. Um, unless, uh, yeah, sorry, you can't even go Mechathune Weapons Project, obviously. That would just be game at that point. So, this turn, it is better for Trunks to... If, if he's playing Dr. Boom, it's better for him to not armor up, right? It's better for him to see which hero power he has. Yeah, because there's, there's a few good ones here. Like, uh, Delivery Drone is... It's okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's usually really good in these matchups, but you just need something more proactive, I think, here. But he's probably going to play it anyway. I, I guess he could play Weapons Project to deny the Blood Razor from ever, ever getting its death rattle. But there's no reason to play that this turn. The next turn, like, Weapons Project into the Spark could be uh, worth considering. I'm gonna do it now. Yeah, gains you armor, means you're, uh, you weren't dying to Scourge Lord Garrosh there anyway. Uh, but I think he, if given any better hero power, would have gone for that instead. This is basically just that I don't really care about having a mech in hand. Speaking of better hero powers, two mana gain seven armor is looking pretty good in this situation. It is a lot more like it, but you are chunking ten to face every single turn. Um, like, you would be facing lethal very handily next turn. Really, China need to draw this fourth Omega Assembly 
right about now so that they can maybe play a cheap minion or two and also gain the seven armor. Yeah, because Tom with his onslaught, his constant barrage of die insect hero powers has just exhausted trunks of any good card left in hand. What All of these know? cards are rubbish now. Meanwhile, though, Taiwan, is there any reason to play Zilliax? Well, it's something on board, right? They're not showing the ability to deal with it, at least with what's in their hand. Um, because, again, you don't know that they have Blood Razor, even though it's very likely they do. Or they have Warpath. Yeah, like, it just gets cleared off there, right? Yeah. You want to get the damage in, uh, in uh, immediately, which means if you have any other mechs in hand, or in your deck, sorry, you want to be getting through to them. Um, Garrosh, it's fantastic here. Yeah, I don't think there are any other mechs, but... Tom can't slam hero power it. Because he'd be then... Sorry, he can't slam on the Executor, I mean, because then he'd be drawing a card into Fatigue. Maybe oh, he, that's he could not consider the, it. the world, yeah, he actually. Could consider it. And, like, there's no way of, of playing the slam last because he probably wants to Execute it. I guess he could hero power, and if it hits the the minion, then, ex then slam it. But... No. He could right. tank the four and then Execute it. You kind of want that to go face, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. The, well, the hero power now goes face 100 Yeah, yeah. Time. Like, I think whatever you do there, it involves getting the hero power to go face every time. Like, this is just by far the most valuable thing you can do at the moment. And you are now representing lethal on the following turn, unless a board that can stop it going to face is made. <laughs> the board of three 1-1s. How does yeah. that sound, Derek? Uh... That's actually fine. Yeah, you can't go Garrosh first and then Hero Power, obviously. You have to go yeah. Hero Power, then Garrosh. Drop the Acolyte as well, because minion. Uh, Both brawls are gone. Oh, man. So you could go, if they go uh, Acolyte into Hero Power, you could go Zilliac Slam and Hero Power to make it not a 50-50, because then your, your weapon wouldn't even be going face. And yeah, Next Trunk's going for it here. He doesn't want to draw cards at all because then he just starts dying to fatigue somehow. But there's no way Taiwan put their resources into trying to deal three damage to the Zachary of Pain. That's not happening with... I mean, at this point, I think you could actually Seven consider armor. playing Garrosh. Seven more armor next turn. You think Garrosh can just try and last out the uh, win the fatigue game? What, you make them draw... Uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's the play, but it's just worth considering I... here. You could start fatiguing them for a whole bunch, right? Because <laughs> you just press the hero power, and that's 12 damage to face that you're making. Instead, they're just going for the one out of three to win the game on the spot. I agree this is probably the better play, but Garrosh was worth considering there for sure. It As did it! That's going to be it. Oh, Finally. my goodness. China came so close to getting over that last hurdle there. Their next hero power was gained seven more armor. Taiwan were really starting to feel that fatigue damage. Um, I would have been hesitant to call that game over right until that last second, Derek. Yeah, they, you know, China did a pretty admirable job of taking that one down right to the wire. Uh, I still think, though, right from the get-go, when your opponent gets a turn nine quest activation, I think it was, you just don't really have a chance of fighting back in that matchup. It's just too much damage coming through to face. Even when, uh, as you know, they put as many cards in the way, they got Dr. Boom right at the end, which is kind of, a bad way of looking at it, but their quest, if you will, because it upgrades That's their true. late game as well. That's true. Just didn't come together for China, but still very respectable. Got close. They fought very hard indeed. We're going to give the players a little bit of a break after that long game, but don't go anywhere. More Hearthstone Global Games in a few seconds. All right, Derek, I think it's time to pick up the pace a little bit. Let's have a much faster game of Hearthstone up next, do you think? I agree. Let's cleanse our palates mm. from all that armor gaining and... You know, all that rubbish, clearing off minions. Pff, no, we don't do that. We don't trade in this me next matchup. We're playing Agra Mage, so we're going face. Yep, and we're playing Death Rider Hunter, so we sort of just sit there and do nothing for a few turns and then go face. Yes, that's the plan. Uh, as, like you said, Agro Mage versus Death Rattle Hunter. This is a, a matchup, or I, I suppose I should say just Death Rattle Hunter versus any aggressive deck. It's kind of a matchup I've had to reevaluate a fair bit recently because yeah. I was pretty firmly in the camp that it's just a completely miserable matchup for the Hunter. Like, you get overrun in the early game and there's no real way to fight back. Um, 
But the ability to go for counter lethal from the Death Rattle Hunter, if it finds the early minions, the eggs, maybe the Keleseth, or a candle shot to fight back for board, they can kill their opponents surprisingly quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's all of the little things I like to say, or I've liked to even before the expansion to say about this matchup, like Cinderstorm is a little bit awkward, Arcane Missiles is a little bit awkward when yeah. there's eggs on the boards, and Explosive Runes can be a little bit awkward. So there are these little things um, that, that the Hunter has going for it here, but we have AHQ Shaxi, one of the top point earners in the world. Did you say the top point earner? For APAC, oh, for not, APAC. Not, not in the world, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be one of the top ones in the world, right? Yeah, I, I think like the, the European and Americans are a little bit higher than the APAC players at the moment. But like you said, very respectable indeed. But here for China, a very nice little hand to be moving forward with. Even ignoring the effects on all these cards, just the stats on them alone should be enough to see them off to a very nice early game indeed. Because you do just want to be locking down the board before they go for their egg into play dead plays uh, because if you already have like a seven eight nine attack on board by the time they go egg play dead you just ignore it and you go face yeah. and they die it's pretty difficult though like i'm not sure how good shooting star is against the hunter and also uh both sorcerer's apprentice like one plus the arcanologist sure but sorcerer's apprentice is so good for lethal later i have to be honest oh as what is that bulgaria taking bulgaria down take russia 3-0 wow that that is a surprise that is surprising russia just really missing pavel yeah clearly we all are to be yeah. honest uh, speaking of surprising, Shaxi here, I have to be honest, it looked like I think a small graphical error there where I thought he had kept all three cards off the mulligan in double Hunter's Mark and Rexar, and I was going to be <laughs> like, mate, this isn't a test game, okay? You, you don't want to be keeping those cards. Um, but here, this is a, a somewhat more respectable hand. Obviously, Flanking Strike and the Saranite Chain Gang are great ways to lock down the early board if the mage isn't too aggressive. Ooh, Stargaze a Luna draw now as well. Stargaze a Luna isn't that easy for the hunter to deal with. Like flanking strike plus candle shot is about the best thing they can hope for to deal with the two four on turn three, or rather on turn four. Like that, they'd have to put the candle shot down first yeah. as well. So it's very awkward indeed. And as you said right at the beginning, Omega Zero just has this hand that Shaxi is going to struggle to keep up with. And while Stargaze a Luna is difficult for the hunter to deal with. It's not necessarily the worst matchup to leave it up for, um, because if there's any minion on board, it doesn't really matter what the effect is, you're still losing. Um, so the, the mage drawing a whole bunch of cards, I don't well, think will be the, the, the most of Taiwan's worries. Well, that depends, Darik, because if both of these Sorcerer's Apprentices are on the board and sticking, then we could see something pretty absurd happening with Luna. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like you said, short of a Mana Worm, this is just the dream. Uh, for Omega Zero. I guess a Kieran Tor Mage as well could make it a little bit more juicy. But even then, the counter spell already costs one next turn if Sorcerer's Apprentice is played. It doesn't matter if it costs zero then with a Kieran Tor Mage. But for Shaxi here. He has nothing. There's just <laughs> nothing. Yeah. You could preemptively Hunter's Mark one of these minions, but what difference does that make? Uh, because you're probably going four drop into four drop and Hunter's Mark next turn as well. This has to be Luna, right? It just has to be. Drop Luna now, and then Sorcerer's Apprentice, and go next turn. Yeah, the, like these cheap these cheap spells that you've got in hand don't necessarily indicate that it will be a good Stargazer Luna, though, right? Like, because uh, you're never playing them, right? You're just playing the rightmost card each sure. time. No, that's true. Like any cheap spells in hand now is a cheap spell that isn't going to be drawn yes. for Luna and then played immediately. Exactly. So maybe this turn, like we see, just Sorcerer's Apprentice. If you can get oh. a secret here, it costs zero. If you can get a four cost spell. It's free here. Unexpected, unexpected result. Unexpected result is that card. You have to go for this, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, you absolutely do. Who cares if they have uh, an egg that you want to polymorph something? They, they would have played an egg if they had it. If they cube something, so what? You hit him in the face. There's no unleash the hounds. There's no punish for going wide in this deck. Polymorph for an egg? What? Don't they just win the game if they go wide here? Uh. Yeah, it, it looked that way to me as well. I do disagree with that pick. Um, maybe they're afraid of Deathstalker Rexar, which is, you know, a concern. If they are met with a board here of some kind, be it Flanking Strike, uh, Chain Gang, that does get a little bit scary. It's a concern on turn six. It's not a concern now. 
Yeah. But they'd have won the game by turn yeah. six with unexpected results. But okay, so if they were met with Serenite Chain Gang there, they're not pushing that much damage. All right, to the base, go, 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 go. Even then, yeah, this is a Stargazer Lumen turn very happily indeed. And uh, I'm trying to find reasoning for Omega Zero's play here. I do agree. You just wanted the unexpected results there and kill him. Behold, the <laughs> of this is probably going to be the most bonkers lunar turn that I've ever seen. Frostbolt as well, uh, or Counterspell. Oh yeah, you can just deny any kind of nonsense they make there. As the Lunar turn, the new the Lunar chain does finally end with a Lunar, but I think it's done the damage here, right? Yep, and it's not going anywhere, is it? Counterspell does a very good job of protecting this board. This. I mean, this is over. I, I <laughs> said I wanted a faster game, over. Derek. I did say I wanted a faster game, and that seems to be what Omega Zero has gifted us. Spider Bomb plus Play Dead plus Play Dead will deal with one minion. One minion, Great. yeah. Great. That's right. And then even if you kill off a 3-2, you're facing down 6-7 King. Yeah, he's dead every single time here. And while I said at the start there, I kind of had to reevaluate the matchup because it ended up somewhat <laughs> better for the Hunter than I would usually have anticipated beforehand. This was just a complete slaughter. Yeah, I mean, Hunter had no play up until turn four. It was just nothing. Mage had everything they could want except Mana Worm. Pretty much. Uh, and when you don't have the answers there, or when even if you do have the answers due to, um, you know, the the flanking strike and stuff like that, if they have the counter spell, it pretty much just locks that out anyway. Thaunos, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, just, you just play you it. Play it. Yeah. They literally have to go Rexa on this turn just to survive. You, you play it because then you can still play Frostbolt afterwards and deal four to the face. It's still just one off lethal, and there may even be another Arcane Missiles or something they could draw into. What's what's the hesitation hesitation about here? Well, it kind of wants to play Polymorph, but even then you play Blood Mage Thalnos first, right? Yeah, you yeah. draw a card. It's not worth getting the ping through to face it. You can always you can draw a fireball. Behold the tools of creation. That's also a lot of damage. I think that means now, even with uh, Deathstalker Rexar, it wouldn't clear up all the minions. Yeah, double Frostbolt's just going to close this one out. <laughs> so, to anyone wondering what situation Stargazer Luna is powerful in, uh, yeah, we found it. This one, yeah. I mean, it just it's a minion that you have to remove or you kind of just lose the game, right? It's the same as Fandral, Auctioneer, whatever other active effects minion you want to talk about. It'll get the job done. Yeah. Frostbolt, plus the trade, plus the Cinderstorm, or the other Frostbolt, whatever Omega Zero wants, is going to round out this game. And yeah, that that was that was two very different games of Hearthstone that we witnessed. Big congratulations for China though, taking their first one of the series. The score is one and one. Next up, it's going to be a Shadowwalk Shaman Mirror. Yeah, we've kind of had all aspects of uh, Hearthstone covered here, where we had a, <laughs> well, on both sides here, pretty one-sided series, where I would say there wasn't much either of the losing teams could do. Uh, for Trunks, he just got a miserable matchup with Dead Man's Hand up against uh, Quest Warrior. And then for Shaxi on Taiwan, there was just no plays. He literally couldn't play a card that would have saved him in that series. Whereas here for the Shadowwalk Mirror, Obviously, it's just a mirror. It's completely blown open as to who could pull ahead here. And it will be very important because when you get up to the 2-1 level in these series, that's when we really start to see players consistently getting those victories afterwards. There are some marginal differences okay. to these decks, though. Whereas Taiwan are literally running the Shadowwalk Kaliseth list from before the expansion, they are running uh, Sandbinder, all the standard stuff. Yeah. Um, China are running Electra. Which actually I would say is more standard now. Yeah. It's more of a surprise that Taiwan isn't running Electra than that agree. China are. Um, and also running Storm Chaser. The four mana, three, four, draw a volcano battle cry. I believe we saw that yesterday, didn't we? From we did. uh, Sweden, was yes. it, who was playing it? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, obviously. But an interesting new card to put in there, basically just to get a uh, volcano, yep. I think, is the only spell that costs five um, or more in the deck. And those cards are in there instead of the second Acolyte of Pain and the Sandbinder. That is that is the only replacement. Makes sense, right? You're basically giving yourself card draw for card draw because Electra, while not strictly card draw, if you really need it, you just save it for the far side and then you draw two cards anyway, which is obviously 
so pivotal in this matchup. Because make no mistake, uh, in this Shadowbox Shaman mirror, it's all about uh, getting that combo off as quick as you can. You want to do it before your opponent, and you also want it to activate consistently. You want to give yourself the highest chance of a Shadowbox bouncing back to hand. Um, However, I've seen some Shadowwalk Shaman mirrors where the fear of your opponent Shadowwalking you first can lead to some truly great players making some truly terrible plays. Uh, I'm talking most uh, about the match I was casting with Sotil at Summer Champs, where I believe it was Nalgadan and Viper in this exact same mirror, Shadowwalk Shaman mirror, where they both ended up failing their Shadowwalk bouncing back to hand. And it was one of the longest, most absurd games ever, where they were both just trying to piece together some kind of a board out of like Glacial Shards mm -hmm. and uh, Saranite Chain Gangs because their deck didn't do anything anymore because Shadowwalk just died. And it can turn into that once you've played the Shadowwalk, probably you've buffed your deck twice now with Kalisath. Mm -hmm. And you do end up with some bulky minions in this very weird battle of attrition. However, that's not the game that I expect to see here. You don't expect to see Shadowwalk whiffing that poorly as uh, Stormchaser drawn by Lee. I mean, it's it's okay statted, I guess. It's four mana. It's a card you play on turn four. It draws a card. I've got to be honest here, Fal. I'm just I'm just seeing red after doing puzzles all last all last <laughs> night. I just see Lil Stormy there. I don't see Storm Chaser <laughs> and her just taunting me every time. I don't care if Electra is going to be disappointed in me if I can't do this puzzle. It's really hard. It's funny. I was feeling that way during the uh, the game with Doctor Boom last. Uh, oh last man, game. he was even worse. Mm. I'll I'll get that North Shore one. I I will do it. We're literally stuck on the same puzzle as well, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, with that one, I took one look at it and just went, nope, and went to bed. <laughs> but back to this specific game, it is looking, I would have to say, pretty good here for real on, on Team Taiwan. Uh, uh, none, none of the combo pieces yet manifested in hand, whereas China obviously has the life drink, one of the less core pieces, but still important in the combo. Uh, and for Taiwan, they just have the draw, which is more important. Yep. You, double Mana Tide is just the nuts here. Yeah, Double Mana Tide is insane. You can run into some issues, where some hand size issues. That's uh, true. If they're not able to empty the hand as quickly as they're able to draw it. But I imagine that Taiwan will be very careful in how they play it. Maybe they save the second Mana Tide for after the first one's been dealt with. Maybe they hold back their Earth Shocks, maybe even use it on one of their own Mana Tides at some point. I don't know, but they don't want to be milling cards from their deck. Interesting here to see Lee go for the hero power on turn two. Uh, it's not necessarily so obvious in this matchup or in this instance as wherein, I should say, a lot of the time with Shadowwalk Shaman, you just don't hero power because the totems don't do anything. Yep. They sit around on board, they eat up damage from Volcano, and you eventually bounce them back with Grumble, which is bad because you run into hand space issues. If he was expecting his opponent to go for um, the Mana Tide Totem. There were two good outcomes there in this one, the 1-1 one, one, and Lightning Storm, which both guarantee, uh, oh sorry, the spell damage because it guarantees Lightning Storm to kill off the, flame, the Mana Tide Totem. So I don't hate hero powering there. However, I think from Lee, I would like to see him start to slow down a little bit now with these hero powers. I think this is potentially just autopilot. Yep, Healing Totem is actually just the, it's the worst, worst one. outcome it's just bad. as well. It sits there, it does nothing, it doesn't even give you a spell damage boost. Spell damage totem is the second worst one, as at least the taunt totem gets dealt with. At least the one one can trade into something. But this is a... Yeah, you're right, that does seem like autopilot. It's difficult to see why Lee would would actually want these totems on the board. Why didn't they print a card called Autopirate, this expansion, <laughs> which could have been like a mech and a pirate? Yeah. I guess they should probably just hire you as well as Lundi. Probably. Between as you, you can come up with the best cards in card idea. <laughs> Three totems here, no spell damage now for, uh, for Lee on Team China here. And now for Taiwan, I think they could probably quite happily just... Actually, no, I was going to say they could stop attacking because these totems are fine. If they have to grumble these back to hand, Taiwan's very happy. Yep. But if China does start to play cards like Mana Tide Totem that they actually want to kill off or Acolyte of Pain, I think you probably still want to be attacking through here. They're certainly considering not attacking. Um, I guess leaving just the healing totem alive is probably bad enough for China. What to do? See what they draw from the far side, though. I guess. 
makes the most sense to play this card this turn. Uh, Earth shocking a Taunt Totem actually is quite reasonable because then it just sits there and can't do anything yeah, whatsoever. That is true. Uh, but here for Taiwan, they are saying to China, you know what? Have all the totems you want. I do not care at all. As Grumble <laughs> is picked up as an 8 8, no less, which can bounce back this chain gang to the hand, which <sighs> is so valuable in this matchup. And Holy this Keleseth, which can actually then be played again by Why not? the rest of the deck, buffing up the other Saranite so that we're looking at four fives. Yeah. Then when Shadow Walk gets played, worst case scenario, if it does whiff, Keleseth is being procced two more times, buffing up the rest of the deck by another 2 2. Which um, means even if your Shadow Walk does fail, then. Your deck is just good. Yeah. You can, as long as that is, if your Shadow Walk fails and your opponent's doesn't, obviously you lose. And it's more likely to happen where Taiwan's Shadow Walk does just work. But it's a chance. It could just mess up for them if well, they're not careful. But also, it, it sort of allows Rio to play his Shadow Walk really early mm. because it creates a big board of minions. Again, the Shadow Walks themselves are going to be 8-8s. Eight uh, they're going to get duplicated and also if it does whiff, and if Lee does somehow clear it up, the real could probably make such an aggressive set of plays after that that China never get the chance to play there in Shadow Walk. Taiwan here finally saying, you know what, these totems, I think it's really just the taunt totem that was annoying for them. Mm -hmm. I do question killing off the healing totem. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like, it's not so clear cut as we're making it. Like, China aren't making a straight up mistake by hero powering so much. Because if you leave a, he a healing totem on the board, they have a higher chance of getting the other totems, which are better for them, because they could get um, Taunt Totem, which denies you some damage through to face. Maybe Real just wants to start chunking away at his opponent with this um, Grumble as well, which is a very valid thing to say. But I do think that because hand size can be such an issue in this matchup, I mean, uh, Taiwan should have been a little bit more cautious there. Again, from Taiwan's point of view, they could just Earthshock one of the totems, mm. and then it's like Earthshocking the Taunt Totem means that there is a zero percent chance of yeah. rolling another Taunt Totem, and it's still there taking up board space and later hand space. It's a it's a very cute play, I will say, and very possibly good. Yeah. But at the same time, if you are uh, Earth shocking one of their taunt totems, you're not hitting Akali and you're not hitting Manatai, yeah, that's true. which is probably more valuable, I would say. Has a nice little one mana 4 3. Battlecry Freezer minion is drawn from the Sandbinder. Worth pointing out as well, if Taiwan had not cleared off there, they could have gone for mind control tech on this turn. Probably wouldn't have wanted to because you <laughs> want to save that for like double life drinker. But hey, if you steal a manatide totem, that's nuts. Yeah, but then they might be stealing the uh, the healing totem <laughs> and punished for China's yeah, mistakes. Yeah, yeah, I guess that is. <laughs> Okay, opted to use the zero mana earth shock there as out of mana. Just dealing with that mana tide totem. It's going to continue to take up board space there. As that glacial shard is nowhere near as strong as Rios glacial shard. That's just a one mana two one. <laughs> I hate to keep harping on about these uh, hero powers here, but for Taiwan, they are now opening themselves up to uh, mind control tech, which is hmm. kind of good. Like. If you can bounce, if you can steal the three five, you are at least not taking too much damage on uh -huh. board, and you have the mind control tech hero power in there. I guess like I, I'm probably thinking about it too much because mind control tech is not for this matchup. It doesn't make all too much of a difference, to be honest. <laughs> it's fine. He got the totem. <laughs> now real has the chance to mind control tech next turn. Wow. And maybe take the three. Take four. it back. They're just playing tennis with that blooming <laughs> totem. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I am talking about the totems here because for the most part uh, in this matchup, they are just trying to draw cards, make sure they don't have too many uh, cards in hand at the same time, even though they are drawing a whole bunch of cards, uh, and play their combo pieces as quick as possible. Okay, Zola is really interesting because there are a lot of different potential plays with it this turn. Saronite, Zola, Saronite is one of the options. My control tech, Zola. My control tech is another option. Playing the Zola on the Keleseth and replaying Keleseth, also another option here. Like, there are a lot of powerful things that Zola can do this turn. I think basically whatever you're doing with Zola, I would like to see Real trying to increase the chances of his Shadow Rock not messing up. So like, Saronite, though. I think Saronite, yeah. It's just more valuable here. Uh, like, say your opponent um, has a nice big board here. So what? You have Healing Rain that counteracts like three turns of damage. Until 
There's something very ironic about what is going on yeah. in this game. No, no one is safe. Even the MCT can be MCT'd. <laughs> You'd think someone who makes a mind control device would probably realize when he just suddenly thinks, oh, I'd love to go and fight for the enemy today. <laughs> And like we were talking about, the Saronite Zola play is what is in the end opted for. That makes Taiwan's amount of uh, Saronites played now is currently up to two. They could play three with yeah. this third Saronite, and then obviously they have a fourth still in their deck. What's really good about this as well is I believe China have played both of their Lightning Storms this game. They have. Which means this very wide board can't actually be dealt with. Volcano probably isn't enough. You are pushing no, it's not. through quite a lot then. Oh, maybe it is. It deals with a lot of it, at least. Like, it, yeah. it, and again, it's not the most important thing here. If you go for attack everything in here, Volcano Saronite, yes, you maybe don't clear up the whole board as, you know, it would kind of be a, a pointless exercise to try and figure out exactly how much attack is health is on the board here. If they go Volcano Saronite, they're surviving. They're alive. Uh, they don't really want to go for that because they want to go for Saronite Zola. Well, there's certainly more than 16 health on the board right now. <laughs> so this Volcano not quite going to clear up everything. But still, Volcano Saronite, as you said, it's still good enough. Couldn't have gone much worse there, though. No. As now both of these Saronites will be happily munched up <laughs> by... <laughs> Taiwan as they draw another one of their own. Brilliant. I do love a good f double chill and Yeti with Taunt. But now actually with <laughs> with the healing rain as well, China are actually just starting to die. And this They're is the losing board because they went double Lightning Storm and Volcano. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the Kelaseth. Like the amount yeah. of damage that can actually do. I mean, say Shadow Walk was played this turn and whiffed. The deck... The remaining deck becomes so strong. Mm. Lee just never gets the chance to play his Shadow Oak because China would end up just representing lethal with a powerful board every single turn. It, it's, it's just this attack on multiple fronts here. Yes, Shadow Oak is probably going to set up a guaranteed two-turn lethal itself, but even without Shadow Walk, this deck is just very, very powerful. And now for China, because of Taiwan's minion-based offense here, there's not really anything they can do. If they throw down Shadow Walk, they have no Hagatha in the pool. They only have, what, a mind control tech. And at that point, they just die, right? Because that's their win condition gone. They can't even play it this turn. On the next turn, even if they did throw it down, they haven't found the Grumble yet. They have found a zero mana Glacial Shard. And that's really not going to do all that much. Yes, China can freeze two minions this turn yeah. if they want to, thanks to Zola. So they can remove Eight damage from the board. Great. It's really their only shot at this point, right? They're going to be taking 14 anyway. And they just need to hope they get Grumble next turn so they can go Grumble, Healing Rain, and then Shadowwalk. Because that is still an, an avenue for victory for them. He really wanted to. He could earth shock one of his own frozen minions next. It doesn't really achieve anything because it loses the Kalasan. Yeah. But. <laughs> Lee here looking like he wants to save onto the Glacial Shard, potentially, as I said, for a Grumble off the top. Um, but you just kind of need to mitigate the damage right now. You're too far behind on board, and your opponent, from the looks of it, is closer to their combo anyway. Yeah. They just need Shadow Walk at this point, yeah. and a Life Drinker. China are behind in every... Well, apart from the fact they've drawn Shadow Walk, they are behind in every single regard. They have more cards in their deck than, than uh, Taiwan do. They haven't played their Grumble yet, which Taiwan have. They haven't played Kelaseth twice, which <laughs> Taiwan have. Like, there's, there's really nothing going for Lee at the moment. And I wonder, thinking back right to the start of the game, because obviously we can see in this situation a lightning storm would be pretty sweet right about now. Um, China, I believe, went for a lightning storm after their opponents went coin manatide totem. And when your opponent goes coin manatide totem, I guess they would probably still do that if they didn't have another one. But usually that indicates they have another three drop, which is either acolyte of pain or manatide totem. So I think giving them another draw and just seeing if you could hit two of those powerful three-drop draws 
was worth considering there because they used two cards that would be very nice in this situation right at the start of the game. Well, the Sound Knight Chain Gangs that Taiwan have played really make this not look that good. Yep, I would agree with you there. <laughs> it's hard. If you disagreed with me there, I'd be very surprised, Derek. I wonder if Lee just has to play Shadow Walk now. Uh, what, so you go Shadow Walk this turn, you have a Saranite, I think. You have, what do you even have a Saranite? You have a Life Drinker. Uh, you've played Zola. Mind Control Tech. Mind Control Tech, yeah. I mean, if you've played a Saranite this game... Then it's okay. Yeah, because you can Zola it but, back to your hand. But even then, you're not winning, right? They freeze two minions. They, it's, it's kind no. of the only way they do anything. So what? If you freeze perfectly two four-attack minions and then steal one of the Saranites... Then they're alive on board. Yeah, I guess it's their only shot at this point, huh? Okay, that's fine. It went in the right order. That's that's that's. They need to thing. not steal, uh, copy the Saranite back to hand though with the Zola. That could still happen at this point. Ooh. They got the Shadow Walk. Wow. Oh my goodness! Wow! 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 Uh, uh, so now double hex kills off both of the Saranites. Uh, sorry, both of the Shadow Walks, but they still have a Shadow Walk in hand. <laughs> As you can just oh, <laughs> look, at, look at Real's face here. I cannot believe this he worked. Was so far ahead. I mean, we can't say it worked quite yet. In the immediate, a shadow walk is back in hand, which means China mm. are still in the game. They're alive, but that's that's a start. And Lee could just draw a crumble and win. Yeah. Which is what will be going through Rio's head. He will be thinking maybe they have Grumble in hand, and they are just relying on these uh, these shadow walks sticking here, which I would imagine will lead Rio to a double hex play. Rio looks so confused. How has this happened? We were winning in every single way. He could even sacrifice off both of his um, unfrozen minions here just to play around the mind control tech effect off Shadow Walk. Uh, yeah, that's worth considering. It, I mean, it's really bad, but they know like you, your minions just will get stolen otherwise. You have to, right? They know what the Zola hit, so they know the Shadow Walk's there. They know the Shadow Walk's there. They have to. Yeah. But then again... Or they could just go for diluting the pool and keep the most amount of attack power on board. That's what they're going for. Also, if the mind control tech is successful, then it means Zola has a lower chance of hitting the Shadow Walk. There's now two frogs on the on the board, which yep. aren't going anywhere, which means the Zola has an even lower chance of, of hitting the Shadow Walk. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was going to say that was a communication breakdown from Taiwan because they didn't even kill off the frogs. Uh, but like you said, they, no, probably, they probably want the frogs yeah. there, yeah. Uh, not... <laughs> Not necessarily, because they could just push for lethal next turn. But, yeah, with the, the Shadow Walk in hand, that is just so unlikely to happen. But with the frogs in play, uh, Lee has to take at absolute best, if the Shadow Walk were to copy itself first, a, a one out of four. Oh, sorry, a two out... Uh, it can't copy itself, can it? So a one out of four. But China do end up with two copies of Shadow Walk on the board. If they can't be dealt with, then they're still the out to draw for the grumble. Yeah. And there are now two or three taunts on their side of the board, which would be protecting it. It looks like they've decided not to go with the Shadow Walk, though. Shadow Walk next turn would now be summoning two copies of itself, though, which is even better in theory. China are definitely still in this game now. They are. Real, however, has the opportunity to completely clear up his opponent's board and not allow for any Saranite grumble nonsense to occur with just attacking with the MC Tech, Hagger for the Witch to blow up everything, and even push Seven to face on the following turn. Yep. Uh, it's not necessarily the play to go for, because you do have some other strong possibilities with Saranite on this turn, uh, maybe even just playing the Ooze if you want to develop as much as you possibly can. Hagatha is very interesting here. The issue is, those frogs are, again, in theory, they're doing Taiwan a favor at the moment by preventing the Shadow Walk from copying itself or rather preventing the Zola from the Shadow yeah. to add another copy of the Shadow Walk to the hand. Like, Lee clogging up his board is kind of what Rio needs. And if he does go for Hagatha as well, he knows that there is a volcano in his opponent's hand due to the battle cry of the Storm Chaser going off on Shadow Walk. 
And so I guess that you you kind of can't even go for that, right? Because your board just gets cleared up anyway. But even then, All the right. original player suggested is what he's going for. Just going on the aggressive. At any point here, it's worth mentioning for Taiwan, they could just find Shutter World. And win. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, sorry, not just win because they still haven't played a live drink. Oh, either. my goodness. But, uh, you know, put themselves back in the game because then they would clear the board every turn with Hagatha, which means no Shutter Walks are sticking for their opponent at least. So, Lee playing Shadow Walk here would probably, probably freeze one of these I two minions. Uh, it would create two copies of itself. And then hopefully it will be <laughs> the Zola at some point in the middle. Yes. That is key. Because if China just ends up with with three Shadow Walks on the board and say the 4-1 mm -hmm. is frozen, then I think Volcano would still clear everything up. Mm-hmm. So They're just going for it here. A lot has to go right here for China. Whew. Okay, a lot has gone right for China. They live to fight another day. A Shadow Walk still knocking about in hand, freezing some minions. And even without the Grumble, if this just carries on for the moment, Lee's going to win. There is the Life Drinker, a very well statted Life Drinker as well, which means after this point, Shadow Walk would do some truly disgusting things for Taiwan. They'd basically just win. Taiwan's Shadow Walk would be clearing the board anyway, right? Because it, it should get bounced back to the hand and Hagatha should be going off twice, which would at very least clear up Lee's Shadow Walks. Lee can only play one Shadow Walk a turn because, again, no Grumble has been played. So it's sort of a race here. It's can Lee draw Grumble before Riao can draw Shadow Walk? And if it carries on as a stalemate, I would say Lee is quite firmly in the lead, actually. Yeah, He is guaranteed a Shadow Walk back to hand this turn so he can just play it. He's not quite guaranteed it because mind control tech will go off oh, at some yeah. point, which... So you just double attack first, right? Yeah, okay, then he's guaranteed it. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. I like this a lot, because you're freezing two minions anyway, right? Mm hmm And you just have so many minions on board here. But again, for real, a draw of Shadow Walk, two Shadow Walks played, would clear up the board. <laughs> but if he doesn't get it, this is so much damage coming through. I mean, it, it's set up lethal. And there is no Shadow Walk. So Taiwan have to clear the board, but they can't clear the board without overloading. Yeah, if they overload, then they volcano. can't play Shadow Walk next turn. I guess they could play Life Drinker or Ooze and see which what, what spell Hagatha gives them, but... Not really going to be giving them anything. <sighs> Valuable, I don't think. Right, like what board clears do Shaman even have that don't overload them? Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, I guess Avalanche would be. I don't even uh, think Lightning Bolt, uh, sorry, Lightning Storm Volcano clears here, right? Like you get them down to maybe three, maybe four health. There's still too much. Yeah, you're right. Uh, plus the Bolt, maybe it would almost mm. be there. Storm Bolt, one of the Shadow Walks that has three health. It's still, it's still a lot of health. And here this does just show, I was not. I was saying at the start, this is not so much about board control. And while Taiwan were doing an amazing job of making it seem like they could simply smork their opponents out of the game, this does just show why it's all about the Shutter Walk. You just want to get that combo to activate. Even when you don't have uh, the Grumble, you can just go for this. And it's more than good enough. It would have been better to bolt one of the three health minions first, right? Oh, no, with only one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but... Oh, no, with only one health. If one of your guys survives, then yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. As a full clear is available now for Taiwan. Well... China just have to go for it. They could have that fail state, which they have now finally hit on their, like, fourth Shadow Walk that they've played. Finally, justice is yeah, served. They could still draw Grumble next turn. They could still draw game. Grumble next turn. Real, if he draws... And they're just killing their opponent. Yeah, that's 18 damage on the board. Life Drinker does protect Real. There's still no lethal represented just yet, but Lee gets a draw now. If this is Grumble, he wins. If it's not, he can Farsight. If that gets Grumble, then he wins. He could go Electra Farsight, right? Because Grumble would only cost three. He couldn't then play the Shadowbox at the same time. 
Yeah, so maybe you don't go for they that. You could play one of them, then that would be a start. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, So you go for this, right? You take the two draws. That's the wrong legendary. That's a healing oh. rain. Okay. <laughs> It's so close, but Real here still needs the shuttle. Walk, throws his hands up in prayer. <laughs> he needs it. Because if he does get it and clear the board, he just wins, right? There's no shuttle walks left for China. He'll heal back up for a bunch as well. Yeah, if this board is cleared, it gets game over for China. Unless they can get like Hagatha into Blazing Invocation or something. <laughs> Even with. Mind control tech on this turn doesn't do enough, even with the froggy taunt in play. All right, it's Shadow Walk. We'll go home. Truth is found in death. Volcano? Wait, no, no, that's not good enough. Even if you steal first, that just puts so, more health on the board. Well, they probably have to start with mind control tech because maybe they get healing rain or something. Yeah. Yeah. The healing rain is that even enough? It's only 12. Even if they steal a Shadow Walk, I don't think that's enough. A path dimly lit. Oh no, it, it is just enough. Yeah. Forgetting there's an Earthshock in hand, it would be just enough if this is Healing Rain. Cryostasis, Cryostasis is can, uh, not still as good doesn't as stale, Still doesn't save them. They're just digging for any kind of spell to keep them alive here. Crushing Hand, <gasps> clear off a minion. That plus Cryostasis is enough. Not with, not with the Earthshock. From where they're right, not with the Earthshock, enough. but for them it is. Yeah. It also overloads them, so they wouldn't yeah. be able to Shadow Walk. I mean, Shadow they have to go for it, but we can clearly see Lee after a game that was looking... He was just so on the brink of defeat there. It was so close to Taiwan being able to take this. But in the end, not even a fully activated Shadow Walk with Grumbles and Zola's played once this whole game. China's still, however, managing to take it because it shows you don't need the full combo necessarily in this matchup. You just need enough to get it done. Well, there you go. China got there. I'd actually put a tick in my notes for Taiwan side about 15 minutes ago. I thought they had 100% had that game in the bag. But there you go. When you can't draw your Shadow Walk and the opponent does play their Shadow Walk, there's not much you can do. There isn't a whole lot indeed. But it was still a very cool game to witness. I like Taiwan <laughs> uh, going for their... Still saving their primary win condition intact, where they could have just drawn Shadow Walk at any point to still be in the game and just have won, basically. But they had the secondary win condition of just winning on board, killing their opponent nice and quick, uh, still putting them in a super strong spot. But unfortunately, the a little bit of help of luck there, Lee able to take it. The score is two and one for China, who are one game away from going four and zero oh in the HGG Swiss against your pick. Taiwan, but Taiwan just need to win two games and then they get there themselves. So who will win? Find out after this. So we were just having a look on the uh, social medias during our break where we'd actually been told off by Hunter Ace. And I think it's something we should probably be taking quite seriously because Hunter Ace is considered the best player in the world at the moment. So, you know, um, we were saying that China should have taken the unexpected results from a primordial glyph. Yep. We were saying that they were crazy for taking the polymorph, but what we didn't consider was the chance that unexpected results can summon a Doomsayer and that could have just lost China the game outright. Yeah, it's a good point to bring up, isn't it? That when you're that far ahead, you just need to lock out any chance that you can lose. Unexpected results can deliver some unexpected results <laughs> in the name of the card, and that could have just made them completely blown out of the game. Uh, it's an interesting point to bring up. Uh, it, it didn't matter. They were winning the game every time anyway. Unless they got Doomsday. Unless they got from Doomsday. Unexpected so results. I guess, Hunter, I, I hate to say it, but what do you know? He's right. Next up, it's going to be Control Priest versus uh, Big Spell Mage, which is a matchup that I don't have much experience with at all recently, Derek. I don't know if you've seen much Big, Spe Big Spell Mage yourself. Uh, I haven't seen it much this expansion, uh, or even uh, last expansion. It's been a good while since I've seen this matchup because, well, Big Spell Control Mage has taken a big step back in the meta. There was a time... Uh, after Kobolds and Catacombs, I think, when it was kind of at its peak, there were a couple tournaments where loads of people were bringing the big spell Mage. And, I mean, I was talking to you in the, about this matchup before we entered uh, the casting desk here in our break beforehand. And I was saying, you know, this matchup uh, it can be interesting. Oftentimes it does come down to a bit of a Death Knight race, which are not the matchups I like. But when both players here manage to hit their Death Knight in the starting hand, 
This is the kind of game that I like to see, obviously being kept there by China, because you just want to be moving towards your end game win condition with Anduin as quick as you possibly can. In the meantime, though, not all that much is going to happen. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. come turn four, China can start to play Twilight Drakes and actually put something on the board. But Taiwan aren't going to have all that much to do already. I believe they are running a few of the new cards. They're running Astromancer, which Lorinda was actually just saying to us before we started casting this series. He thinks is a surprisingly good card. Yeah. Um, and they're running Bright-Eyed Scouts. So they do have some minions that they can be putting on the board before turn nine. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think with, you know, the problem for Big Spell Mage a lot, of, a lot of the time was that it didn't do that much in the late game. Uh, you know, there were builds a while ago that were playing uh, the Syndragosa package, uh, often with Nazoth when that was still in standard before rotation, uh, which was, you know, sometimes a little bit more ability to put stuff on the board. But now, as you said, with Astromancer and with Dragon Caller Alana, Lich King and Alexstrasza as well, mm. you can just kill your opponent surprisingly quickly with this deck. It's not like the super slow big spell control mages that we've seen before. Uh, but even then, like you said, this matchup really begins on turn 9, to be perfectly honest here. Um, you love can put a couple minions on the board with the Twilight Drakes, but the point of Big Spell Mage is that it can deal with so many more minions than the Priest actually has. It has to be able to fatigue decks like uh, Zoo, where just every single card in their deck is basically a minion. <laughs> Um, and so just a couple of Twilight Drakes, a couple of Primordial Drakes, uh, it's a bit of a breeze for the Control Mage. Except, right now, it's not. I mean, okay, do it is. as it happens, Doomsayer <laughs> is going to do the job. There isn't a way for China to deal with that, but it's just it's just funny to me that in this situation, there's no Polymorph, there's no Voodoo Doll, there's no way of immediately dealing with that Twilight Drake, but yeah, Doomsayer does do the job. You love will be putting the second Twilight Drake down next turn, but by then, Meteors and things can happen. That's right, should be fairly easy in these first few turns for both of the players. I guess you just kind of curve out. Um, Giggling Inventor, I agree that you play it here. It's not necessarily the most obvious of plays, uh, because, you know, as the mage, you do want to make sure that you always have the ability to make Water Elementals after they play Shadow Reaper Anduin, because for the most part, I would imagine, China's just going to stop playing most of their minions because they don't want to give their opponent to make water elementals out of them. And that's one of the reasons why Giggling Inventor is so strong in this deck, because it's not just the standard power of Giggling Inventor, it's seven mana to just turn your Giggling Inventor itself into a water elemental, which is amazing against Priest, because you need to be able to stand up against the onslaught of damage that they're going to be pushing forward in the late game, which elementals do perfectly. And now for your um, serious reminder that Giggling Inventor is a very good card for the latest expansion. Fits in a lot of decks. Did, did anyone need a reminder? That surely the hello, 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 hello <laughs> has been <laughs> seared into everyone's mind at this point. Now. But I agree, it's a good card. Okay, I wasn't sure for a second there, but glad we've uh, worked that one out. I mean, is it so good that you love just has to psychic scream it away? No. It, it, Surely like, not. What is this doing? He knows that on a later date he will be met with Dragon Caller Alana if yeah. he's not careful, Lich King, Alex Straza, blah 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 blah. All those big threats to which uh, you know a measly little Annoyatron or a couple of Annoyatrons does not warrant a psychic scream, especially when you have the possibility to go, to go for Wild Pyromancer plays at some point as well. Um, I suppose the one thing to consider about it is that it does dilute your opponent's deck, so they maybe draw to Frostlich Jaina a little bit uh, later, which is, again, very important. You do want to make it as unlikely as possible that they find Frostlich Jaina. Uh, but yeah, it's just not worth it here. They're not killing you. Not yet. Uh, well, the Giggling event, well, the Noitron specifically won't be, no. And next turn, if Taiwan want to, they can coin out Frostlich Jaina. Um, is there any reason to consider going Alex Straza instead? No, uh, you are doing a lot of damage. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9. I think you'd probably go for the Frostlich Jaina first. You are then playing into Psychic Scream quite heavily, and you do want to make sure your elemental survives. But even then, it, it's Jaina on curve. You just take it. Yep. Yep, yep. 
And Alex, now the game begins. Alex Jarza <laughs> should definitely get a chance to go off at some point anyways. It's unlikely that Roger's board is going to remain empty for the rest of this game, even after a psychic scream here, a potential psychic scream here, I should say. Because unless there's some uh, pretty specific answers here for China, uh, Ulove is actually just going to be taking a lot of damage because if he doesn't Psychic Scream here, which we can see he probably will, uh, Alex Straza's smack face is a huge chunk of damage that China's taking. Uh, and even if they do hit the Lich King, which demands a pretty specific answer in Shadow of Death, again, Ulove has found it, which is pretty important. Or, again, it would be a bit of an onslaught for... Uh, you love. The problem is that then after the Shadow of Death gets used, then Alex Strauss can come down, and then that has to be dealt with by something. Um, Taiwan could just go wide here. It looks like they're considering going Loot Hoarder, pinging it, and Bright-Eyed Scout. You play the Bright-Eyed Scout first, obviously, see what you draw. Unfortunately, it's a five mana, a four mana card turning into a five mana card. That's not ideal. This seems fine to me. Taiwan now draw yet another card. <laughs> it's the Noitron. Did you double... Did you, Words. Did you do a double take there again, Derek? Like, I did not do a double okay. take there. It's got a little uh, gem in the middle. It's a collectible card that's completely acceptable. Okay. It's just Death Knight cards, which, sure. So now for you, love, he needs to be thinking how... Well, Darkness okay, it's first of all, how much pressure am I under? Am I scared yet? To which the answer is probably no. You've got a good amount of heal. Um, you don't need to be afraid of dying yourself. And then the next thing you need to ask is, how much can my opponent heal if I Alex Straza them here? Uh, to which the answer is, if they have one Water Elemental in play, they're probably healing up for too much, because they can freeze your Alex Straza if they can't remove it anyway, which they probably would do anyway, and then freeze your face. Um, you're just good. They're going to be healing out of range too quickly. You've got to clear the board first here, then you go for Alex Straza after you've found the Mind Blast, and then you kill him. Mind Blast number one being picked up by you, love. So progress is being made, at least in some respects. Now this Divine Hint has come down, though. Maybe Taiwan are going to be even more tempted to play this Alex Straza, putting, putting China down to 12 medium. Yep, look at that. No hesitation whatsoever. It's time to finish the job. Demanding a piece of removal here to deal with it and stopping uh, you, love, from going for any kind of an aggressive play of their own. Uh, we can clearly see the Shadow of Death there is available to close things out, but then you quite happily throw down Lich King. And it's not like in other matchups where your taunts can protect you from a big amount of damage. Uh, Control Mage just kills off everything you throw in the way, and they push that damage to face so consistently. Shadowy thoughts. Is someone injured? China just gonna heal and draw as much as they can for now. They still have three or two Mind Blasts and a Shadow Visions in the deck, I guess, they're fishing for. Just to try and find their own way for lethal. But they didn't really get anything of merit. And by this play, uh, like, I... Yeah, I do agree that they kind of had to go for drawing here because none of their cards in hand really did all that much. But leaving a one health guy on board here is so bad. It's so it's just so devastating here. Because you need to clear off water elementals every single turn or you just get overwhelmed and you don't win. Roger is just making yeah, as aggressive a play as possible in 8-8 and 3-6. That's not so bad. It's just another set of threats that Yulov has to deal with. Um, interestingly, obviously the Twilight Acolyte is in hand. I'm expecting to see a Cabal Shadow Priest in China's list, um, but there isn't one. It's just a decent card, right? Like It's a little bit too full, the deck list now, with Giggling Inventors mm -hmm. thrown in there as well. Like We have seen lists with um, the Cabal Shadow me. Priest in there, but they're not running Shadow of Death. They're not running Omega Medic. It makes a big difference now, though, doesn't it? Because if there were a threat of Cabal Shadow Priest, maybe Taiwan wouldn't be able to risk playing the Lich King. Yet. I think you'd still just go for it, right? Like you're you're not you're probably not going to spend the whole game afraid of a combo that might happen, and therefore you don't play your best card. Okay. Because if they don't have it, you're in a great spot. You hit them for eight, and you probably just win. Even if they do steal it, you go for Dragon's Fury or Meteor or Blizzard or whatever. You have the answers that you need. Sure. So spending a whole nother turn here 
for you, love. He clears. He does no damage through to face. Just clears off a water elemental. And now for Taiwan, there must be some way that he can make himself another water elemental on this turn as well. Even if it's just Voodoo Doll Ping, seems pretty good. Yeah. Job done. Death and Decay is a little bit more damage to face. Um, probably not quite so good as uh, Death Coil for potentially even more damage yeah. or the alternative effect of healing yourself. I mean, it is good. Like, three damage isn't that much worse than five. The, the problem is, obviously, they're not going to want to be dealing wide AoE to the board. They're going to want to be dealing it in one place, the face. And this will be a third Mind Blast or the option of a third uh, Mind Blast, rather. But maybe they have to go with the Psychic Scream this turn. If you're not going for the Scream here, then what? They play another Water Elemental next turn, just because of the hero power. Um, they're healing a whole bunch back up, and then you want to go Alex Straza, I guess? But then the alternative is you go Psychic Scream here and just pray they can't make a Water Elemental on their turn, which is kind of unlikely. We can see that Taiwan can end up with two Water Elementals instead. Three Mind Blasts is 19 potential damage in one turn. That's almost an OTK after Alex Straza gets played. But the thing is, these plays take time, and Ulov needs to survive until then. So yeah, as it happens, Psychic Scream is, I'm sure, the reluctant pick there from Ulov. And uh, he's going to consider playing it this turn. Passing on it in the end there. This is risky, leaving the Lich King on the board. Wow, I do find that somewhat surprising because uh, I suppose what I was imagining China's plan there was you play the Psychic Scream, pray that they can't play a Water Elemental next turn, then go Alex Straza and kill them. Uh, it could obviously, on a way, it couldn't be a counter spell due to them testing for it. There's no other way that it could be messed with from Psychic Scream. So it is, I'm going to argue, going to be punished somewhat for this play. Another Lich King card being generated as well. And they probably have to go for... The, uh, the Psychic Scream at this point anyway, just to survive. Another Death and Decay, that's just three more damage. And yeah, as you said, Psychic Scream seems... Ooh, is Duskbreaker... No, it's just not good enough, is it? Three damage to all minions, even combined with a few pings with the is hero power. Yep. Don't like enough to me. Explosive Runes lowering, lowering China's health to five. Yeah, kind of hoping, I think, there that it was a... Uh, what, a mirror entity? If this were Death Coil, this would just be lethal. If either of these Death Knight cards were Death Coil or Frostmourne, yeah. that would just be the end of the game right now. Just one off anyway, and <laughs> two more Water Elementals that can come down this turn, I would imagine, with Water Elemental, Loot Hoarder, Hero Power. Um, oh. Or even just going aggressive sure. here to the face. You have seen... Um, Both Divine Hymns, yeah. Well, I was th 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 uh, thinking of Psychic Screams. If you do get Psychic Screams again here, you just have lethal then, don't you? So yeah, you're right. You just set up lethal pretty much every time here. Both Divine Hymns gone. Alex Straz are the only way of healing. There's a third Mind Blast, but again, 19 damage. It's still not enough. That's 11 short. Showing pretty convincingly here for Taiwan the power of Frost Lich Jaina when it comes down on Kurt. <laughs> the Priest just needs to spend all their time killing off Elementals uh, and just praying that there's one, one moment where the Mage stops developing Elementals. Uh, but with Roger's list here, with so many one health minions that he can ping himself, Voodoo Doll, Loot Hoarder, Giggly Inventor, yeah. there's just no slowing down. It's also the power of Death Knight cards, though. I mean, these Death and Decays, if they were anything else, like you said, Death Coil would be strong, Frost Morn would have been strong, it would have been lethal already. Yeah. Has Taiwan just going to casually push another six damage, set up more water elementals? There is still another Psychic Scream in the deck somewhere, right? Because one was taken yes. from, the, from the vision. So. And that's their out here, right? Yeah. Uh, or Omega Medic is the one remaining oh, source yeah. of healing in the deck. So two out of seven isn't that bad. So. Double Dustbreaker, though, is kind of the best you're going to get in this scenario. Yeah. Able to clear off the entire board of Elementals. And now Roger here. Uh, I think this does make me somewhat disagree with this play he went for earlier. Uh, of going for 
what was it? Double water elemental from hand and ping to and face. And ping the face. He was trying to set up the two turn lethal with the death and decay and the ping in his hand. He was, but now that I actually think about that, there's obviously the Alexstrasza for heal, which is fine for Taiwan because then Alexstrasza doesn't go face. They probably just win. Mm -hmm. There's also the Omega Medic, though, I believe, for China in their deck list, mm -hmm. which would have been a pretty strong decide. punish, especially alongside Psychic Scream, or even without it. They heal up to a very respectable range. And now that these uh, all these elementals have been cleared off, Roger's still obviously in a good spot. I'm not trying to deny that. But he could have had more stuff on board is the point I'm trying to make. There's the Psychic Scream, though. And then once, once you've seen the last Psychic Scream and both copies of uh, the Dustbreaker, I think you can just Alana. quite happily go Dragon Caller Alana. Yeah. Well, three Psychic Screams have been played this game, thanks to the Oh, yeah, sure. Well, every, I mean, every but yeah, yeah. yeah. There is no risk of any more. Well, actually, I mean, one of the Mind Blast in hand that was taken from Shadow Visions could, in theory, be a Psychic Scream. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Good point. But, but then, so what? He Psychic Screams back your Alana, and you make more yeah. Elementals next. And also the fact that it was the, the top deck Psychic Scream yeah. played a couple turns ago, probably a turn or two too late. It does give the game away to an extent. Still, only two Dragons actually summoned by the Alana. Still lethal, though, on this turn. Voodle Doll Ping quite happily ending this one up for Taiwan. Again, just showing that even when you have Death Knight on Death Knight, as I always love to see in these matchups where it's so heavily decided by that, Jaina, Elementals, every single turn, even three Psychic Screams dealing with the majority of them. Roger still through some very nice play, getting himself a victory and equalizing back this series. Yep, we are two and two. We are going all the way to game number five in this pivotal game. Both of these teams, 3-0 and oh in the Harston Global Game Swiss. This win all but guarantees qualification to the top 16. Next up for our final game is going to be Trunks on the Control Warlock versus Shaxi on the Odd Rogue. Kind of a close matchup. The Odd Rogue is... Uh, Oftentimes going to be preying on some of these Warlock decks. Pretty much most Warlocks are a good matchup because if you're hitting the Zoo, you have that dagger to just kill off every single one of their minions that they're throwing down. Uh, against the somewhat slower Warlocks, like Q-Block that you sometimes see, or even Warlock is somewhat more common, they sometimes struggle to put up enough defensive maneuvers, especially because they're so aggressively tapping themselves down to a low health total. Control Warlock, though, does have a few more tools to deal with the aggressive strategies, I would say. Yeah, it's... Kind of a new version of the deck that we've seen ever since the expansion came out. It does run Skull of the Minari. Mm -hmm. Obviously no cubes because we're calling it Control Warlock. Um, Gnome Feratu. Demonic Project and Sacrificial Pact is interesting because uh, the obviously the Demonic Project can rip something like a Leroy or something out of the Odd Rogue's hand and remove some damage. And then Sacrificial Pact can just deal with the minion for free later on and gain some health for zero mana. And this does sound, uh, this is somewhat confusing as well, uh, similar to Lee's list that he won Cobra America with this weekend. A different Lee to the one who's playing now, uh, spelled L-I-I -I instead of L-E-A-O-H, because that's also confusing because it's not even spelt Lee. Whatever. He managed to win Cobra America in a very convincing fashion this weekend, and Lorinda and I, who were casting it, uh, liked a lot of what we saw from his Control Warlock. Um, it had the tools to deal with the aggressive decks through, you know, healing, defile, hellfires, Void Lords as well, the bane of aggro for the longest time now. Uh, but also the ability to deal with the control decks, because you have Rin in there. I'm not sure if they're running Rin. Uh, they in are this. not. Okay, no not Rin in this, in this version. Uh, won't make a difference in this matchup, though, obviously. No. Uh, and also the demonic projects to deal with cards like Malagos or Togwaggle, those key control killer cards. Um, so I think it's found a pretty good spot here in the meta, even though it is mostly eclipsed by Zoo, I would say, at the Global Games. Looking at the sort of tech decisions in this list though we're talking gluttonous ooze we've got stonehill defenders we've got shroom brewers we've got giggling inventors all of these cards either heal or taunt which is pretty good against odd rogue yes uh it's definitely what you're looking for especially as the vast majority of odd rogues have phased out i and b cows we can clearly see team taiwan have also done in favor of the blood knights the much more popular current tech card which is obviously in there two of as seems pretty much standard at this point uh, which should do a pretty good job against the Giggly Inventors from Warlocks, uh, from China's Control Warlocks, sorry, which we can see also two of them in there. It's a matchup in which Void Ripper could potentially have done some things to Void Lords, to Doomsayers, to Stonehill Defenders, but 
uh, they have not been included in Taiwan's odd rogue list. Yeah, a, a less popular tech card at the moment, yep. I would say. And here for China, not a bad ha uh, hand to be starting with. Doomsay is always fantastic against the aggressive decks. And Shaxi here has got a pretty miserably slow hand, actually, to get going. No one drop, not even a two drop. Oh my god, how unlucky in your Odrog. <laughs> no two drop? Wow. I know. He needs to go and uh, get this deck list looked at. No, in all seriousness, dagger up into Hench Clan Thug will be fine in most cases. There is a Doomsayer for China that can maybe preemptively put a stop to one of these three drops coming out. What do you think about that, Derek? Playing the Doomsayer on turn two for Trunks. Well, your opponent just hasn't played a one drop, so their hand is clearly a little bit heavier. Therefore, very likely to have one of the absolute powerhouse three drops that you are so afraid of. But Shaxi here, I think by going for the attack in, is maybe trying to bait his opponent into not playing Doomsayer. Because obviously, if you have Thug in hand, the plan is you dagger up, you don't attack, and then you get the double buff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe it's indicating that Taiwan are planning on playing a Vicious Fledgling rather than the Hench Clown Thug instead. I'm not sure. Either way, it hasn't worked. Doomsayer has come well, down. Well, it still has worked, right? Because if they are expecting Doomsayer to come down, they've just got two damage to face that they wouldn't have otherwise had. Okay. If they thought there was a Doomsayer in their opponent's hand, this was the absolute best way to play it. Hmm. Interesting. But now Trunks is going to start with the taunts. He's got a taunt for pretty much every turn if he wants it. Um, Staggered on if he would just like to curve. Tarlock, Tarlock is there instead. He's got Stonehill Defender. He's got Giggling Inventor and Void Lords later on, which could be coined out on turn eight. Like China have all of the taunts that they could possibly want. Yeah, a bit of a weird one here because Tarlock, I think, is the best card that you could choose here. The most uh, defensive, good stats. Um, but you don't really want to go coin Tarlock into Giggling Inventor because with no response at the moment to a massive Blood Knight, Giggling Inventor is a very scary play to curve into for Trunks. He kind of wants to be able to go Giggling Inventor, Coin Twisting Nether. Yep. And I think that's why the Stegodon has been picked here. Even though in terms of defensive ability, it's a little bit weaker, uh, he just needs to have a contingency plan for if Blood Knight meets this Giggling Inventor. Now, though, Taiwan can actually start to get on the board. They have multiple good options here. If they want to put down the Hench Clan, they could still deal with the Stonehill with the Deckhand. They could go Deckhand and combo the SI7 Agent out to deal with this 1-4 threat. Um, or they could go with the Fledgling. And if Trunks didn't have a way of removing it, then potentially that could start to go off next turn. So all of these options are looking good for Taiwan. I think if they are afraid of... The Hellfire, mm. then obviously the Hench Clan Thug is the way to go, and I imagine they're going to be gearing up for that because not only is it best against Hellfire, also best against Spellstone. Um, it's such a difficult choice. Because if there is no Spellstone, Vicious Fledgling at this point could just win them the game. They do know there's at least one more Taunt in the hand, though, so there are a lot of situations in which the Fledgling wouldn't do that much. Wow. Holding back the deck hand means that Trunks. Uh, doesn't know that it's there, and that's just two more bursts that's been saved for later. Yeah, and potentially going into a more valuable target, right? Like, this is just yeah. a, a one attack minion. It's, yeah, yeah. it's good to kill it off. I think if he was going to play the Hench Clan, then you absolutely do want to go Deckhand because it plays around Hellfire and uh, Spellstone very effectively. Yeah, that's true. But here, if they Spellstone you, so what? You can just kill it off with your dagger. If they Hellfire you, it blows up the whole board. I think if you're playing Fledgling, this is a, a very smart way to go about it. And now that that's a uh, Spellstone gone, daggering into the deck hand, buffing up the Hench Clown Thug, it should be difficult for Trunks to deal with this, in theory. Yeah, it's worked out very nicely. Uh, there's no real answer to this Hench Clown Thug on curve, right? It would have to be Coin into Siphon Soul, which, again, if Shaxi sees that, fine. Your opponent's made a pretty weak play uh, onto the board, so you can then just follow up with whatever else you want. One drop and giggling or SI7 agent, all that nonsense to just put as much attack on the board as possible. And obviously if there isn't an answer, Taiwan go, brilliant! We go deckhand into Fungal Mancer and push so much damage through to face. Holy moly. So still a little bit unsafe to play that Giggling Inventor because, as you've mentioned a few times now, the Blood Knight risk is there. Don't want to have to face down a 3-mana 9-9 with no way of dealing with it. 
So we're going to play the second stone hill. Unpowered Steambot is four yes, mana. Protect the face for nine hits, I guess. Better than, than some of the other options that were there, right? That was just yeah. not a very appetizing selection. But then again, for Warlock, without the Skull of the Minari equipped, there aren't all that many good options that you can get, right? Because you don't want to pick Void Lord because it's very expensive. Myra's unstable element sitting in the hand rather mm. uselessly for now. Do you think that it's possible that a situation comes up this game where they can play that? Oh, definitely. Uh, like, towards the end of the game, if things are starting to peter out, they've played their hand. If they don't... Like, the thing with Myra's unstable element is at first it feels like you're giving yourself a clock to win the game in the next couple of turns, which you obviously are. But if you make kind of mediocre plays for a few turns, you always lose against Control Warlock anyway, because they just play Gul'dan, they play Void Lords, they play Giggling, and then you lose. And because it makes your intermittent turns so much more powerful, it's usually worth playing it when you have the spare mana, which Taiwan obviously do not have yet. So many possibilities. That Siphon pickup, though, while I was saying Taiwan would be pretty happy about it coming down on a 4-4 Hench Clan, uh, when they have a 7-7, you're a little bit sadder to see it munched up by the Siphon. Yes. It still would leave Taiwan ahead on the board, though, even if just slightly, with the Fungal Mancer able to attack the face next turn. I mean, you take what you can get, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Siphon is still looking great there. Oh, Firefly. So Firefly double SI7 agent might just be the way to go here, dealing as much damage as possible. It is leaving yourself very open to a Hellfire, uh, whereas if you go Giggling Inventor, you're leaving yourself very open to a Defile, right? So, so if options. the Warlock plays Hellfire next turn, what else are they doing? Like, does that matter too much? They're taking three damage. They've played both Stonehill Defenders. I guess Hellfire Doomsayer is about as bad as it gets. Yeah, I guess it's not the worst, hey. You, you've got to play something here, though. Like, uh, I agree that Giggling Inventor, given that you've seen no defiles and it completely destroys your board, was too much. Ah, this guy's tough. Yep. Yeah, it was going all in, though. Trading in three damage, uh, three mana for three damage in the, uh, in the case there was a Hellfire. Clearly, though, we can see that is not available for Trunks. He's going to have to go for something a lot less appetizing. There's Coin Twisting Nether. Mm. Uh, actually, is Giggling Inventor that bad here? Because in theory, it eats up four attacks, maybe the dagger and three of the minions or whatever. Then if or if Blood Knight happens, worst case scenario, it eats up the dagger, it eats up the 2-2. Two -two. You just twist take seven one. and then you Twisting Nether. Maybe taking seven is too much, though, because then Leroy Dagger would be lethal the following turn. So. Yeah, and also Giggling Inventor... Uh, in its ideal state would be a lockout of the game. Like, you clear the board, then you play Giggling when they make a very weak play onto the board. If it's just being eaten up by what's on board, you're still met with the same problem next turn, which means if they don't make a giant play onto the board with Blood Knight, then you, you just have to twist together what was there anyway, and you've wasted a Giggling. Double Taunt, however, is also a consideration uh, in Stegodon Unpowered Steambot. Very weak to Valspine at that point. But China Seeing is their best option. They want to make their opponent overcommit here. Because I guess what this does do for Trunks is it clearly tells your opponent, we don't have Hellfire. Go wide on the board. Go nuts. You can develop as much as you want. By which point, uh, Shaxi will probably take that because if he doesn't develop anything else, it's not enough pressure anyway. Then well, you rip the nether. It doesn't even matter too much if Shaxi does eat up a, a Twisting Nether because at that point he could just play Myra's Unstable Element and draw the rest of his deck. Yeah, then you're getting Void Lorded though, which is. Oh, yeah, the Void Lord is a problem. To get through. And again, we've established there's no Iron Beak Owl in this deck, there's no Void Ripper, there's no easy way of getting rid of that Void Lord. Maybe they can get something from this Blink Fox. Tom Fire is more damage for one mana. That's. That is something. Yeah. After a Leroy Jenkins, like with a dagger, that's a potential 12 that's damage nuts. combo there. So on this turn, if you wanted to, we could see from Shaxi uh, Soulfire hero power to take down this Stegadon. So many Looks like he's actually gearing up for a Myra's Unstable Element, which if you were going to play it any time soon, 
This isn't the worst time to do it, I suppose. Can you I don't really want to cards? develop any more. Is six cards um, enough? It's not really the number of cards you're getting. I mean, you'd like to take more, obviously. And the dagger is probably more valuable, but I like the consideration there from them clearly taking it slow. Like, your next turn would just be more powerful because this hand doesn't do that much at the moment, actually. If, you're, if your board is cleared here and your only play is Giggling Inventor, that's not very much damage at all. This board even gets destroyed by Defile. It's a very weak board. Defile into Giggling Inventor here feels like it would be game ending. Maybe even just Giggling Inventor Doomsday would be fine here. Alright, I'm gonna go with the Nervous Show, why not? Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> I don't think we've seen a Cold Blood yet, have we? Uh, no, I don't believe so. So Leroy, Cold Blood, Soul Fire, Weapon would be 16 damage. Both of these Giggle Inventors that have been in hand right from the start of the game, and the Myras that has basically been there from the start, have not been played. This has been a pretty miserable hand that Shaxi has had to move forward with. So maybe if you are afraid of a Void Lord, you go Leroy Jenkins the face, hit as well. That's eight damage, brings them down to seven. The yep. how, how do they do the rest of the damage? Yeah, though? you don't really do get over the line, do you? You don't have any more mm. SI7 agents. Oh, if one of those giggling inventors was a cold blood, the game would be over now. Taiwan would have won already. You just have to pray there's no Void Lord, right? It's your only chance. There's the cold Oh, this is so much damage. <laughs> it's too expensive, though. I know. I guess you can start to clear up a Void Lord on the following turn. Actually, with the with the S with the deck hand, the cold blood, the the weapon, ten damage, the deadly poison, and the soul fire. That's yeah. a lot of damage. Not not going with it though. I mean, this is just so much better in the in the state that there is not a void lord. You want to have this in play, right? That was fourteen damage with the uh, with the deadly poison as well. Wow. Available that turn, fourteen damage. So almost had it. That is so close at the end. Two damage off. If it had been a, a cold blood instead of a deadly poison, that was just lethal, right? Yep. It was. But now, is there any way that you can connect this Vicious Fledgling to face on this turn? If you go Leroy, Cold Blood, and then you attack in and you soul fire one of them, it's not really happening, is it? You just got to hope there's no board clear and develop this turn. Yeah, this is go nice. For the biggest Blood Knight possible and hope that China don't have a way of dealing with it, which actually they don't. Yeah, perfectly trades in, doesn't it? You just have a 9-9 munch up that Void Lord very happily. The, the problem is China can go Doomsayer Giggling Inventor, and that all but guarantees the fact that the, the Doomsayer will go off next turn. Yes, it does. Just too much taunt in the way, really, hey? Yeah. So Shaxi here, instead taking the route of just trying to clear up what he can right now, this does mean that he has less to clear up on the following turn. But even after attack, attack, I'm trying to do the maths in my head so quickly. I don't think there's any way that you can connect this uh, Blood Knight to face. And even if you did, that means you're not killing off the Doomsayer, which China is very likely to play on this turn. And then your board gets destroyed, and they can just heal back up with Spellstone and all that gubbins. Uh, the question is, how safe do, do, do China want to play this? Because they could go Giggling Inventor Doomsayer. They could even go Giggling Inventor Doomsayer Demonic Project and see if they can hit a, hit a Leroy that's been sitting in the hand. That's true. But maybe that's too safe. Oh, heal is good. And I mean, talking about playing it safe, playing it safe, sorry, maybe a Giggling Inventor is met with a second Blood Knight. Oh, could still very well be in hand. Though with the three Void Lords on the board, if the Doomsayer goes down as well that turn, I think it still just deals with it without a problem. Or rather, Taiwan can't end that turn with anything on the board. Either way, Trunks back on 14 health again. Going up to... Oh no, okay. Looked like they were yeah. going to play the Shumura there. 14 health with five taunts on board. I don't see, Derek, how Shaxi ever gets this final little bit of damage to the face. They were too off lethal a couple turns ago um, with the deck hand, cold blood, deadly poison, soul fire combo. 
And that was after Unstable Element had been played. If they had a Cold Blood in their hand before Unstable Element, then it just would have been lethal. Taiwan came so close this game in a variety of different ways. Ah, oh, I can't give up on my pick just yet. Maybe they can make it happen. They've got a lot of stuff on the board here. The other Giggling Inventor being picked up is like the worst thing they could see here, apart from Gul'dan, it's, obviously. It's all horrible for them. Ugh, because it's the... not great. But they have so much burst damage. If they just get <laughs> one attack through to face, like Leroy, Deadly Poison, Soulfire to face, is game. The two ones trade in, the Giggling Inventor comes down, that's more Annoyatrons. They could play Demonic Project, which would turn Leroy Jenkins into a Blood Imp or something. Or a Doom God. <laughs> we can believe. Maybe a Void Lord of their own. Like, there's, there's, there's options. I really, really don't think there are. I'm sorry, Derek. I think if the second Giggling Inventor hadn't been found, it was not actually completely over. As dire as it was looking. Just look at that wall of annoyance. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> that, that is the point. It worked. They got me. <laughs> uh, obviously nothing even to draw after the Myra's unstable element. What you see is what you get for Taiwan. And while they are fighting it out to the absolute bitter end, it doesn't look like it's there. I guess they just accept that this board gets blown up and then hope that uh, Leroy, Deadly Poison, Soulfire can win the game. It's a lot of damage still. It is it is the 14 damage. It is the 14 currently damage. Currently needed. However, again, Demonic Project could just rip Lee right out of the hand. Shroom Brewer yeah. puts Trunks oh. out of range anyway. Um, do you think that's all that's holding Trunks back from playing this Demonic Project? The chance of turning random minion into a doom guard well yeah because i think he pretty much knows it's leroy at this point which means he probably goes for it but if it's not leroy and it's some rubbish card that they're trying to bait you into thinking is leroy like back. maybe they're thinking it's the mind games yeah it could be back exactly <laughs> something like that then even if it is back you kind of want to demonic project that right but again maybe they get void lord maybe they get doom guard just one of the big demons that could be bad As we can see, though, this puts Shaxi out of range, and Trunks will be able to deal with the Leroy after it's played anyway. Uh, there will still be a buffed-up weapon there, which would represent lethal the following turn. Oh, yes. I am shocked that this <laughs> game is still going on, frankly. But if that demonic project comes down, it just ends. China didn't play it. My boy's Taiwan. They're going to take it. I'm feeling it. They take five damage next turn. That's six. Um... Plus the three is nine. Oh, it's just lethal. <laughs> yeah, that is over. <laughs> Unless they can't because they'd be lethaling themselves, but Shaxi wouldn't go for that because they'd be self-lethaling. Okay, that's game. I give up, Falk. You win. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's definitely game. I super give up. <laughs> <laughs> Valiant effort for you, Derek, and for your team, Taiwan. Like I said, they came so close. There was that one turn where if multiple different things had gone any other way, then it would have just gotten there. But there goes Leroy. It's just a doubling him. So uh, Hellfire with the draw finishes up this game. China are the second team to go 4-0 and in the Hearthstone Global Games Swiss. And honestly, I know that they just took down Taiwan. I'm sorry if that wound's a little bit fresh, Derek. But seriously, China, a very deserving team. I would definitely agree with you. They've been putting up a very strong performance here. Uh, it's just been a great year so far for some of these Chinese players. Uh, Lee, after going to his summer champs, even though he was swiftly eliminated there, has been putting up a pretty strong performance here. And like you said, I've agreed with pretty much most of their plays. Let's take a look at the series that we just watched one last time. There you go. Three lots of green on the left, three lots of red on the right. That's how it works. China takes the win. Don't say green is not a creative color. If that's what you're thinking, don't say it. <laughs> I was just marveling at how sterling your analysis was there. There's, there's more green on the left, so they win. I think that's what it means. What's Hearthstone? Well, that's how it works, right? That, I mean, you're not the wrong. The more green, the better. That's why aggro decks are good. Minions are cheap. They're green in the hand. You play them straight away. That is a strategy I can agree with. Let's take a look at some of the best moments of that series that we just watched. Boy, were there a lot of them. This was the play you particularly liked back in game number one, clearing up the pinata in such a way where the legendary minion got burned. Yeah, it was just locking out the victory, wasn't it? It was that thing of maybe there's some kind of nonsense that can occur. 
Uh, kind of similar to China not picking the unexpected results where they could have got Doomsayer, I suppose. Yeah. Um, just realized some kind of minion maybe could have pulled that back for China, as unlikely as it was. But we can clearly see a well-placed hero power closed <laughs> things out in what was pretty much a uh, one series right from the get-go. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was still very excited for China having a little shot to win there, but uh, never mind as Omega Zero take a very, very quick win against Shaxi there with the Agri Mage versus the Death Rattle Hunter. Uh, in, in contrast to the previous game, that was a turn six victory. And now this was a game of Hearthstone as well, where we thought Rial was winning in every single possible way this game. But China got that Shadow Walk, they got the freezes they needed, they got the MC Tech they needed, they got the Zola that they needed, and managed to turn the game around. I mean, you, you said it in the middle there of that series, didn't you? They were behind in every regard, except they had Shudder Walk in hand. And we just saw what Shudder Walk does in that <laughs> series. It just wins. Yep. As you can see, that there is Shudder Walk just winning. The final one, in fact. And now, you love versus uh, Roger with the Priest versus the Mage. You said from the beginning, this should be a pretty straightforward matchup for the Mage. And there we go. We saw quite a simple lethal there after a Lich King had stuck around for three turns. And then to close things out here, a series that was so nearly going for Shaxi's way, even right up until the bitter end, with Leroy almost delivering a surprise lethal. But for China, after toying with their opponents a little at the end, managed to pull things back in what was a surprisingly close series there right to the end. Yeah, that was actually a great way, I think, to start day number two of this week of the Hearthstone Global Games. We have four more matches coming up today. Next up is going to be Romania versus Switzerland. Uh, both of these teams are two and one at the moment, so they definitely want to get these wins in. Gaskin and Lorinda will be bringing you that in just a few moments.